Middle Tennessee will kick off. Scott Payne will kick off to NM State. And we are underway from Aggie Memorial Stadium as Reggie Echols watches it skip into the end zone. And Diego Pavia in the Aggie offense will start at the 25-yard line. This offense, really good all year. Tim Back has been calling some exceptional games lately. Danny in this offense humming 27-plus points in all four games during this four-game win streak. And I think they're coming with up with more and more plays, getting more and more people involved from different positions. We see the backup QB, Stowers, in, the, in multiple positions, and so there's a lot that he can invite, a lot of great players that he can get involved, and I see he got Stowers out there again. So, yeah, Coach Beck has done a great job. Middle Tennessee really struggling stopping the run. They allowed 4-0-1 on the ground their last time out against Liberty. This is a handoff and a good run on first down for Monte Watkins. He rumbles near the 40 before he's finally pushed out of bounds. Usually the Aggies will try to establish the run early. I think they really will, Danny, against this struggling defense stopping the run for Middle Tennessee. Yeah, I think they saw what happened with Liberty. Liberty was able to really impose their will on them in the game and rush for more than 400 yards. In this case, we get Monte to the edge. I think if there's one guy you don't want to get the edge, that'd be that guy right there. He almost broke that. Aggies are averaging 6.1 per rush. That is second best in FBS. Monte Watkins, 11.2 per carry this year. Brady in motion. They fake the handoff to Jones. Pavia runs straight up the middle. Bulldozes his way up to the 45. He picks up a half dozen. You know, Diego, it seems like, Adam, he's getting better and better at his decision-making. In this case, he could have flipped the ball out there. He saw that there was nothing there. He took a quick peek back in the middle. No one's covering him. He took the ball himself, got some good yardage. Pavia, a true dual-threat quarterback. 18th career start as an Aggie. That pass is incomplete. Intended for the backup quarterback, Eli Stowers, who is playing tight end and wide receiver right now and playing it quite well. Yeah, I think they saw that coming, and he jumped that route early. We're, we're kind of lucky he just didn't get in front of that thing, but he was all over Stowers. He couldn't get anywhere there. However, if they're jumping those routes, look for a quick pump fake or something that's going to draw them in and then move, move the receivers down a little bit on them. Middle Tennessee defensively, they've allowed 40-plus in two of their previous three games, 30-plus in four of their previous five games. Looking for just their third win of the year. It's been a really tough schedule, though, the entire way. Brady in motion again. Pavia looking left. He throws left. Caught by Jonathan Brady. First down and more into Blue Raider territory. All the way down to the 44 of Middle Tennessee. Hey, Adam, how about that no look, right? You saw Jonathan Brady out there, and he's out to the far left here. He releases the ball before Brady even turns around. So Brady knew exactly where he was going. You have to have confidence from the quarterback that says, I'm going to put the ball exactly where I believe you're going to be, and the receiver has to turn around and know the ball is on him right away. That's what happened. Good catch right there. Brady, the team leader in catches and receiving yards, his 24th catch this year, his 47th career catch in two years. Pistol back is Jamani Jones. This is Watkins in motion. They fake the jet sweep to him. Toss back to Jamani Jones, and he slips. A whole lot of trickery. Stowards touched it. And then it's Jones who slipped at midfield. Yeah, sometimes you're thinking, okay, I got him on the heels. Now it's time to start bringing in some more motion, do some things to get him uh, off balance, and it just didn't come off well there. But, but part of what's really happening is you got to get that front line up there really doing a good job blocking him. So far, Adam, I see that offensive line holding their own and really uh, doing a good job. Loss of five on the play for Jones, although he was put in a tough spot right there. So it's second down and 15 back near midfield. Three receiver look, tight end is Tomas Whitford. Pavia will dump it off looking for Whitford and it's deflected at the line by Quindarius Dunnigan, who came into the game with six pass breakups for the year, which led all D linemen nationally. He really gets his hands on the ball. Yeah, seven tackles last week. He's a tough one right there. And he did put a, a big pop on it right there. He saw that thing coming the whole time, was waiting back, waiting for that dump off. It's a really experienced D-line. Dunnigan in his fifth year in the program at Middle Tennessee. Third down and long. Across the middle, caught by Stowers, and a big open field tackle is made by cornerback Teldrick Ross. It appeared initially that Stowers might get to the sticks, but he falls well short. Hey, do you think uh, that uh, Stowers thought that Ross was as close as he was to him? Because he turned the corner, and I think he saw the green right there. And boy, Ross really closed in a hurry on that. Stowers has, a, has another gear, 
Uh, but it just didn't happen that time. Let's see what the Aggies choose to do this time. They get eight. Now it's fourth and seven. Jerry Kill really rolled the dice. Last time out against La Tech. I mean, this is fourth and seven, but you're in a tough spot here at the 41. So, of course, out of Ethan Albertson's field goal range and also not really a spot you would love to punt it at. So timeout is called timeout. by the Aggies. New Mexico State, their first of the half. This will be extended into a full media timeout. So Jerry Kill wants to talk about it. Aggies were two for three on fourth down. Welcome back to Aggie Memorial Stadium. In addition, in, in addition to what's at stake on the field for Aggie football, trying to earn their spot for a second straight bowl game, there's also a lot happening off the field as, way, as well. Today's game marks the homecoming and Ag Day celebration, and both are yearly staples during the Aggie football season and homecoming. Now, as always, it's brought a number of NMSU alumni and also former Aggie football players back to campus. Meanwhile, Ag Day continues to be a fan favorite, especially in the pregame tailgate area. This is the 10th annual Ag Day, and the pregame fund included food sampling, educational booth, animals, and more. Ag Day is hosted by the New Mexico Department of Agriculture and the NMSU College of ACES. Back to you guys. Thank you, Tatiana. Good punt by Potosi, Missouri native Zach Haynes, and he pins Middle Tennessee Danny all the way back at their own one 40-yard boot. Perfect placement by Haynes. Yeah, great coverage right there too by the by the Ags downfield on that. So yeah, go for it on fourth. Not we, we talked about a little bit off air. It was like fourth and seven. That ah, seems a little far. So certainly if you knew you could pin him here, it's like hey, punt the ball because you can pin him on two and, and go get him on defense. Aggie defense playing extremely well. The previous six games only given up 16 points per game. Nick Vadiato, the quarterback for Middle Tennessee in his third year in the program. He is inside his own end zone with Frank Peace at the running back. This is a dangerous spot for this very good Middle Tennessee offense that has scored 30 plus in each of the previous three. Mattiato back to throw, throws it near side. It's caught by Justin Olson, a transfer from North Carolina. So some more breathing room now for Middle Tennessee. Well, certainly you're going to bring a little pressure on there. And I think Coach Dryling did, called up a, a, a blitz where you're going to send Keyshawn in, kind of looping around the outside. But it was a quick toss and didn't think you could get there. Pitch and catch a four for Vadiato and Olsen. Peace still the running back. They'll stick it in his belly. He runs up the middle, nowhere to go. Peace is back after missing the previous two. We'll also see Jaden Cradle. And Terry Wilkins as well. A gain of three, third and short coming up for Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee needs the 11. Patiano will take it himself, trying to get to the 11. He does. Up near the 15 before he's belted by linebacker Keyshawn Elliott. He's not the runner that Diego Pavia is, Danny, but he can run a little bit. He can, and he can see the green right there and can get there, and we just couldn't get to him in time. He's a smart quarterback, and so he can see what's out there, know that we had him pressed pretty hard, and he had to take it himself for that first down. Peace in, still a running back. Star wide receiver Elijah Metcalf was in motion left to right, and the pass is incomplete, intended for Olsen once again. Yeah, so this is going to be a, a really an upfront game. If the defensive line can hold their own right there, put pressure on there, look for a coach at Dryling to call up some different stunts, different ways to get uh, to get the quarterback off his mark, and that's what he would try to do. And it's like let's just let's just get him off his mark and not give him something comfortable to, to throw from. Mariano are in second and ten. RPO again. He had a man, but it was a little bit out of the reach of Olson. Reggie Akles was right there on the back end looking for a pick. Olsen should have had a catch right there, yeah, but for Matty sure. Otto threw it out of his reach. Yeah, well, here's the, here's the thing. Lots of pressure up there, and he has to try to get the ball out a little earlier, a little faster than he wanted, and that's just what happens. If you're going to go gamble and go get him, maybe you have to throw the ball a little faster, and the timing is off just a little bit. In that case, that would have been a big play right there if you had caught that. Aggies only have two interceptions this year defensively. Both came in the same game in the win against FIU in early October. Third and ten for Vadiato. Scrambling left, throws it across the middle, and complete. Intended for Holden Willis, who was looking for a flag. He won't get one. 
and the Aggie defense stands tall on third down. That's a great series right there. So that's what you need from that defense. You get up in there, get in his face, get some pressure on him. Don't let him feel too comfortable. I had a chance to had a chance to speak with Coach Dryley, and he said, what are we going to do? And he said, well, you got to get him off his mark, first of all. you got to watch number nine very fast and try to make them run the ball because if he gets too comfortable throwing it, could be a long day for the Ags. Miles Tillman is the punter. Redshirt sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama. Jonathan Brady back deep at his own 40-yard line. It's a low kick. Brady will get a return. Brady far sideline. Brady into Blue Raider territory, trying to tightrope the sideline. He cuts back. Brady into the end zone. Punt return, touchdown. The Bishop Gorman grad, Jonathan Brady. There is a flag down near the 35, though. Yeah, Jerry I'm, Kill oh. is furious. This will be an interesting call. I, I, think, I think Coach Kill is going to be very furious if they call that back. I think Jerry Kill was on the field screaming at the official before Brady even entered the end zone. Zoning number two, holding number two, receiving team. Mm. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, New Mexico State, timeout on the field. Danny, that's the second time this year that Jonathan Brady has had a punt return touchdown called back. The first one against Sam Houston. We're back to Aggie Memorial after this. Holding penalty on Malachi McLean brings back a punt return touchdown for Jonathan Brady for the second time this year. So the Aggies offense comes back out. And Danny, you talked to wide receivers coach, former Aggie wide receiver himself, Tony Sanchez this yeah, week. Yeah, former, former player, love to call, gig him a little bit about what's going on. It's a family affair this week. He's got his uh, dad coming in, his mom is in. He's got a brother coaching, of course, at Oregon Mountain here. So he grew up, family of four boys. And so there was a lot of smack talking going on, but more about Tony Sanchez. I love talking to him, but it's a great guy. Family affair this weekend for him. Aggies will get it at the Blue Raider 44. Pistol back is Star Thomas. We saw a healthy dose of Jamani Jones during the first possession. Catches made by Trent Hudson, and Tony Sanchez was singing the praises of Hudson to you, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I said, so coach, who's the guy? Who's the guy that stepped up? It's like, ah, I didn't quite see that happening. Who, was, who are you going to look at? And he's, um, he said, Hudson. Hudson stepped up. He's done a great job early on. He had a few injuries, but uh, he's the guy that's really stepped up. So look for him for have a good game. Pavia, plenty of time. He unloads downfield. He has Brady, but he overthrew him. Oh, JB almost found the end zone anyway as his helmet slides off his head. That was a great throw. That's a great try. Number right six there of the of offense must leave the game for one play long. for a helmet off. Miss short because he was in coverage, but knowing Brady's speed, you can just see him cutting across on that post route, and he was going to break open, and he tried to just find him perfectly, and it was just a bit too far. There's another guy that uh, Coach had uh, great things to say about him is Jonathan Brady. His speed, the way he attacks uh, at all places, are going to be returning punts like he did, or just barely missing one here. He's a big player. Third and seven, the Aggies need the 34. Empty backfield, Pavia rolling left, fakes a throw, trying to slip out of a tackle, can't do so. Linebacker Sam Brumfield got to him, so similar to the previous possession, the Aggies get into Blue Raiders territory, and now they're kind of in no man's land again. This one, fourth and five. You know, fourth and five, that's a tough one. Fourth and three, I think it's it's a gamble one. It's We can get three yards easy. Five a little tougher. In this case, that last play, I think he's looking at someone downfield, but he didn't want to make a mistake. An important, you know, great stat that I read was that where they've had zero turnovers, Aggies are 5-0, and oh, so take care of the football. Let's see if the Aggies go for it or if they will just take the delay of game to give Haynes some more breathing room. And they will. So more breathing room for Haynes to punt. That's the intent right here to take the delay of game. Delay of game. Number 10, offense, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. Aggies had no intention of snapping the football there. Haynes just dropped in a, a pitching wedge inches from the hole moments ago as he pinned the Blue Raiders down to the one. We'll see if he can do something similar here. Haynes, a transfer from SEMO, Southeast Missouri State. He is from Potosi, Missouri. 
About an hour outside of St. Louis. Here's the punt with Dobson back deep. Dobson will call for a fair catch this time inside the 10, so a pretty good job again by Zach Haynes. New Senda Credit Union is a proud supporter of the Aggies. Visit them today at their Pan Am branch for all of your financial needs. You can find them online at newsenda.org. 37-yard boot for Haynes and tough field position again for Nick Vadiato. This Aggie defense, Danny, is playing so well. This makes it a whole lot easier when you have the opposing offense this back deep in their own territory. Jet sweep, it goes to Metcalf, trying to bounce to the perimeter and a flag comes in. Reggie Ankles was right there, so was Miles Rouser. You know, Metcalf was uh, one of the guys that coach had said. Let's see what the penalty is here. Personal foul, face mask, number zero, defense. 15 yard penalty mm. from the end of the run, automatic first one. down. Those are big ones. Coach was saying Metcalf, he's number nine. He's the guy they wanted to stop because he, he felt like he was a uh, big yardage, a lot of receptions, covers a lot of ground. He's a fast guy. So if you can get him under control, you can see the face mask right there. He did grab it. But if you can get him under control, maybe force him back into the run. That's kind of what the Aggies are trying to do. Metcalf, not a big guy, 5'9", but 40 catches this year. Vadiato under heavy pressure. Overthrows his running back, Pieson. That's what the Aggies are doing really well right now defensively is getting to the quarterback. Eight combined sacks standing in the previous two games. Lots of pressure. I think he was looking at Metcalf across the middle, little hook there, but Aggies closed on him in a hurry and he had to throw the ball away. So it's second down and 10 for the redshirt sophomore from Plantation, Florida. Nowhere to go for Peace and he is driven back. Buda Paletti came in there late and absolutely laid the lumber. Arn Pieson, the big running back at 196. You know, I, when I was talking to Coach Dryling about some of the guys up front that are really doing a great job, I, I mentioned Abuda Paletti, and he's like, man, is he playing at a high level right now? We need to have him have some big plays today as well. Last week he had a big play where he stripped the ball, forced a fumble. Let's see if he can't do something similar today. Three sacks, three tackles for loss in that forced fumble in the previous two for the sophomore from California, Buda Paletti. Batiato lobs it downfield way too far. He was looking for his wide receiver, redshirt sophomore, Javante Sherman. So Middle Tennessee will have to punt once again for the second straight occasion. You know, I like the coverage. I like the, the plastering that we're doing. It, it's um, something I talked to Coach Rice about. It's like, so what happens when, when you get a quarterback that sits back too long and he's he may be even scrambling what do you work on with your players? He said plastering. That's the word we use. We practice a lot of plastering. Good plastering right there, Adam. Nowhere to go with the ball. Jonathan Brady back deep. Tillman will boot it away again. Brady had that punt return touchdown brought back earlier here in the first quarter. On the holding penalty by McLean. Aggies almost blocked it. There is no penalty. It might have been deflected. And it's going to take an ice Aggie bounce near the 40. I believe that was freshman there is wide no receiver. Foul for roughing the kicker. Down number 17 Paul. tipped the kick. First down, and New Mexico State. You're Time out on the field. And you yeah, that was Power. Donovan Fopel. Yeah. Freshman wide receiver almost blocked it. Aggie football when you come back. Well, it's been a, a while since these two teams have played a football game. First game in 18 days for Middle Tennessee. First game in 11 days for NM State. And it was a win in Ruston at Louisiana Tech 11 days ago in comeback fashion. Diego Pavia, a rushy touchdown right there. The Aggies would go on to win the game, Danny, 27-24. It was their first time winning a game when trailing by 10-plus since 2015. So it was quite the feat. That was the ankleception game, by the way, when the Aggies had that ankle interception from Terrell Hanks and Javon Ferguson as star. Thomas bulldozes near midfield. He picks up 11. Look at the blocking up front. The blocking, they secured both sides, so he comes right through the line. There's no one there. The linebacker's out of position. You can see it coming right here to the left of your screen. You see the, the, 
the right tackle come out, pick up the linebacker, and Star Thomas was just nothing but green grass. Hey, Adam, on that comeback, are the the where you're ha collecting a win at La Tech, that shows maturity in yeah. your offense, right? So I really like that. That's good stuff. Good point. Quick toss out to Cordell David. The Aggies feel like a breakout game is coming for Cordell, right? Yeah, I think uh, as I was talking to Coach Sanchez and he was uh, singing the praises of Hudson's, but he said, don't lose track of Cordell because he can make you pay. He's a great receiver and we just haven't quite got the combination going, but we will. So if someone comes out and says, you know what, I'm going to press Hudson, I'm going to double him and you leave Cordell, that's a mistake. So I'm looking, I'm waiting for Cordell to break one out. Only his ninth catch this year. Last year, he had a team best 343 receiving yards for the year. Well below that this year. Pavia will fake the jet sweep. He's going to keep it. Nowhere to go. Taken down by Jonathan Butler, the redshirt senior middle linebacker. You know, I think Middle Tennessee is really saying, look, we're going we're gonna to not let Diego kill us. So everyone, don't over-pursue. Stay in your gaps. Play some sound defense because the minute you over pursue and you give him a little look, Diego will make you pay. In that case, they're sitting waiting. So we're going to have to kind of look at throwing the ball out, trying to open him up a little bit more and get those gaps a little bigger. Aggie offense 0 for 2 on third down so far. They need the 41 here on third and four. They've been in the same spot pretty much all evening so far here in the first quarter. Pavia throws it across the middle. It's caught by the backup quarterback, Eli Stowers, for a first down. Danny, he is second on the team at catches. He's only been a receiver now for five games. That is his 19th catch this year. Ah, uh, the, the Denton Geyer high schooler, he's just really balling out here at New Mexico State. Look at the pop he takes on the back side of that to, to his helmet there. Looking at the route, little crossing route, he had to fight through two guys to break open. And Diego had lots of time, great blocking up front, and let him clear to get that ball to him. And he took a little pop, still held on. Stower is a busy man at practice every day. He's still taking snaps at quarterback as well. Aggie's trying oh. to swing it out. It is going to be an incomplete pass. It was intended for Watkins. This Ruling D on the line field, an incomplete pass. Hits Second their down. hands on the football frequently for Middle Tennessee. Very long up front. Yeah, and I think and I think they've been coaches like if you can't get in there, you can see him coming from the left side there. That if you can't get in there, you're not going to get to him. You need to get up in the air, get your hands up. In that case, they did and knocked the ball down. We could have got some good yardage on that if he could have just got the ball out of there. That was team captain and three-year starter Zaylin Wood who got his big paw on it to bring up second down at 10. The ruling on the field on the previous play is an incomplete forward pass. The play is under further review. Interesting. Ron Hudson is our referee today, by the way, Conference USA crew. So the replay booth will get their first look here with 424 left in the first quarter. Now it's interesting too because the play never stopped, right? I mean, they never let them finish the no. play if it was a backward pass. And I'm not even sure who ended up with the ball. And the whole implication of what they're looking at here is if it's a forward pass, it's an incomplete pass and you go back to the previous spot. If it's a backward lateral pass, that's a live ball and the play should be going on. In this case, everyone stopped because there's a whistle. So I'm not, how you, I'm not sure how you adjudicate that. And I think it's going to be a coaching point as well for those two players. Watkins for the Aggies and then Trey Fluell in the free safety for Middle Tennessee. That's a free football. Go pick it up. Right. Finish the play yeah. because you just never know. Yeah, you don't. But but it could be there was lots of whistles and everyone had stopped. Um, but, yes, absolutely. All right, so while they review that, there is so much at stake today. The Aggies are looking for just their second five-game win streak since 1961 they are technically already bowl eligible because they do have six wins but because of this 13 game schedule this year due to that road game at hawaii the aggies need seven wins to assure a bowl game trying to get that seventh here today and it would be the first time since 59 60 in which the aggies went to back-to-back -back bowl games you know adam as i talked to the coaches prepping for the game uh, you know i i brought it up and said hey you know, what, what about this? You're ready for a bowl game, bowl game, you know? And they, all of them, separate meetings, all of them said, we're not even thinking about that. You know what we're thinking about? Conference championship. Yep. That's what we're, next game, get us to the con conference championship. So, I, I mean, they're very focused. Bowl important, but focused on that championship. Yeah, and right now the Aggies are in the driver's seat to make the Conference USA championship game. After review, 
The ruling of an incomplete forward pass stands. Second down. Liberty is already in. They already punched their spot. They will likely host unless they stumble down the stretch. Jacksonville State, they're in second. They almost beat South Carolina and what? Columbia today, but wow. they're ineligible. It was a last drive. They're a yeah. very tough team, and we're going to see them coming up as well. They're a tough team, but they can't get to the bowl, so, but they're a very good team. So technically, the Aggies, if you look at Conference USA championship standings, the Aggies are in second behind the Liberty Flames. All right, second down and 10 after the review. Scoreless game late in quarter one. They fake the jet sweep again. Man is open, but it's intercepted by Trey Fluellen. Fluellen down the near sideline, still on his feet, hops around Cordell David. His third interception this year, his eighth career pick. You know, Adam, I saw when Diego kind of pumped and waited. Fluellen was just kind of sitting back there, and he should have known right there, the minute he, that right there, he should have just stopped. He should have not tried to force the ball back in there because then he was just sitting back there waiting for that ball to be thrown. And the minute he did, he just stepped in front to take advantage of it. So that's a tough one. The first turnover for the Aggies in four games. Their last six games, only two combined turnovers. Turnovers an issue early this year. They committed three in the opener against UMass and then three in game three at Liberty. 27 yard return on the pick for Fluellen who's been great his entire career for the Blue Raiders. So better field position this time. They hand it off to Jaden Cradle. So Adam, this is a good time for the defense that really stick their heels in there and get the ball back to the offense so quickly you can put that interception behind you. You do not want to give them some, some breathing room. Let them have some mojo, really start moving the ball down there because they can make things happen in a hurry. They're a very tough offensive team. Second down and six. Matiato hands it off, Cradle again. He slips near the 50. And the Aggie defense will try to make another defensive stand on third and three coming up. Big third and three right here midfield. Middle Tennessee one for three on a third down. The Aggies also one for three on third down. Matiato looking to right, he'll swing it out for Cradle, open field tackle. Linebacker Keyshawn Elliott, shy of the sticks. Keyshawn saw that thing the whole time. The minute they went in motion, the play snapped. You see the, you see the running back 22 going to your left of your screen right there. As soon as he started moving that way, Keyshawn was just flying out. He was just screaming down there and it's just a race. And Keyshawn read that the whole time and shut it down. You know, Coach Dreiling, as I spoke with him, I said, uh, what about Keyshawn? He said, hey, here's the thing. As Keyshawn goes, so goes yep. our defense. When he has a good game, we have a good game. So I hope that sparks us right there. That's a great job by Keyshawn right there. Hard to believe he's done what he's done already in his career, and he's only a sophomore. The leader of that Aggie defense. Tillman will kick it away again with Jonathan wow. Brady back near the 10. And this will bounce into the end zone. So the Aggies will get it at the 20. Two minutes left, no score, first quarter. We have a defensive battle against two pretty good offensive teams, Danny. Yeah, I, I think so. I think this has really turned into a, who's gonna make the, the first mistake. I think there's a lot of uh, chess being played on both sides of who's gonna show what right now. Everyone is trying to stay back, no big plays. We don't want anything to, to really turn this around in a hurry. Um, we've had some chances and that turnover really kind of hurt, but you're able to shut them down, give them no points off the turnover get the ball back to the offense, let him get down the field, chew up some clock. Diego Pavia so far five for nine, 39 yards and the interception. Aggies averaging 4.7 per rush on the ground, 14 yards for Watkins, 12 for Thomas. Running back here is Jamani Jones. The Aggies will at times during games use four different running backs. RPO for Pavia. Good blocking by Ron T. of Asue as Pavia throws it downfield, caught by Trent Hudson, who came back to the football, his second catch. 
lots of time. So what really made that play is that uh, Trent Hudson didn't give up on the ball, first of all, and the other is Diego keeping it alive, right? So he's looking at his first, his first right there going across the middle. He's jammed up, nothing there. Trent didn't give up on it. He kept working to the open field, and was, uh, Diego was able to find him and make a good throw. 23-yard connection for Pavia and Hudson. Hudson now with 19 catches this year, second most receiving yards among the wide receiving core. Empty backfield, Pavia designed run, taken down from behind by Ricky Smith, the transfer from Purdue. Diego only picks up two. So Ricky Smith was spying, and his, his job was to really watch Diego. If Diego, if there's not a back that comes out of the backfield and Diego gets the ball and looks upfield, he's coming right now. So there he is, he's in the backfield, because the minute he sees his key, Diego's gonna take a step forward, there's not a back for him to cover. He's going, and he went and shut it down in a hurry. The Aggies go empty again in the backfield. We're on second down and eight. Four out wide. Stowers playing tight end here. Heavy pressure. Pavia throws. Stowers on the sideline hauls it in. Danny, he'll play. Tight end, he'll play wide receiver, he will yep. play quarterback, he just does it all. And I think, as you and I talked about it, you know, it's, the game has changed quite a bit where if you get a number two quarterback, and yes, he's a great quarterback, but if he's a great athlete in general, why not get him on the field? And you can see the awareness that he has with his body. It's like, I'm getting close, I'm getting close, okay, let me tiptoe, one foot in all you need, and he did it. Yeah, keep him on the field, he's a, he's a game changer. And that'll be it for one quarter of football. No score, but the Aggies are driving the football. That's the end of the first quarter. They're at the 42 of Middle Tennessee. Aggies looking for just their second five-game win streak since 1961. Aggies have done a really good job overall this year of finishing drives. 230-plus rushing yards in each of the previous two games, among the nation's best running the football. Second in the country at the FBS level behind only Oregon in yards per rush. 6.1 per rush coming in. They need the 32. Or in second down and three for Pavia. He'll signal a man in motion. He fakes the jet sweep. He's trying to stampede his way to the first down. He gets two. He's going to be a yard shy, and it's going to be third and one. You know, the aggressive running nature of Diego is awesome to watch because in that case, it's a keeper all the way. He's going in there. He knows where he needs to get the first down. Didn't quite get it, but just going in there, just ducking his head and getting everything he can, he's just a tough player all the way around, whether it's going to be throwing the ball or running it. This might be four down territory here at the 33, although it would be in Ethan Albertson's field goal range. Cordell David in motion. Pavia will keep it again, navigates his way for the first down and then some. All the way down to the 25, he picks up eight on the third and one rush. That's a great pickup right there, and that's a play that they've run quite a bit. You're going to put guys in motion, you're going to move people around, and they're looking for that quick toss or a quick sweep out to the outside, and that opens the middle right there, and Diego knows exactly where he needs to go. Big hole, he picks it up, and more. Danny, how about A.J. Vipulu, the big left guard, leading the way, blocking for the Aggie O-line? That, that O-line is doing a great job up front. Seventh Aggie first down in the first quarter plus, only two for the Blue Raiders. Pavia was thinking about throwing it left. He had Watkins, but it was going to be a hard throw because of that long defensive line for Middle Tennessee. So they drop Pavia for a sack on first down, a loss of four. Yeah, I thought he tried to get rid of the ball there. You can see on the on the the linebacker that was creeping up to the line of scrimmage, he was coming the whole time, and Pavia just couldn't get rid of the ball fast enough. He was in there. There were four guys on the line already, so everyone's accounted for, so he comes open. Pavia with two plus passing touchdowns in all but two games this year, making his 18th career start as an Aggie. 11 passing touchdowns, five rushing touchdowns in the previous six for the Albuquerque native. Aren't second down at 14. A lot of breathing room for Pavia. He has a first down as he navigates his way all the way inside the five-yard line. First and goal for the Aggies. 
Wow. Coaches won't give up, right? Spread them out. I know they're thinking it's going to be a pass. They lined up out there. They had some guys that were going to drive them long and get them out of there. You see the linebacker. He's trying to pick up his guy. And so with no one left to pick up Diego, Diego keeps the ball, goes upfield, and just pushes for as many tough yards at the very end as possible. Those are important yards right there. Just a tough guy all the way around. 25-yard scamper for Pavia, who's under center on first and goal from the four. And off to Jamani Jones, and he muscles his way up to the one-yard line with big tight end, 275-pound Ron Tiavasue leading the charge blocking. Yeah, when Ron's in there, he's been a blocker. He's a big blocker in there. He's a big guy. He's a tight end as well, but a lot. he's in there a lot for blocking. I like that they're pressing that line, and they're moving and working that defensive line and making them earn every inch. Timeout on the field for an injury to the defense. Player down right Player now down. for Middle Tennessee is linebacker Jonathan Butler. It seemed like Trey Fluellen was a little beat up on the play as well. You know, I think last week um, Middle Tennessee ended up having some long drives and it just beat their defensive line down. And even I think the coach at the end of the post game was saying, you know, after a while, they just beat you down and you're you're just, there's not a lot there. And now it comes with depth. If you don't have the depth to back those guys up, um, it's tough. But when the Aggies are in there and they're pressing and they're pushing, it makes it very hard for that defensive line. That's just a battle. That's a grind down there in the offensive and defensive line in the trenches. Love it. High formation look once again. Pavia under center. Full back is Tia Vasue. Deep back is Jones. Tight end Trevor Stevens in right now as well. Only one wide receiver. Hand off to Jamani Jones. He is diving for the goal line, waiting for the signal, and he's in. Touchdown, Jamani Jones. His third rushing touchdown of the season. His ninth Ruling career. on the field is a touchdown. That's just a great job right there. That's just Number coach. 46 that's just, you know, man on man, Plus lunch pail football, as Coach Kill likes to say. Line them up, nose to nose, get Ron in there, shove him up there, and that gap pushes that linebacker back, creates a seam enough for Jones just to push in for the TD. What do you always say, Danny? Let the hosses go to work? Let the hosses go to work, yes, man. Sir. That was them right there. Nice drive covering over six minutes for the Aggie offense. The ruling on the field of a touchdown is under further review. And now they will take a look at it to see, I would assume, if Jamani Jones' knee was down before he crossed the goal line. If it stands, eight plays, 80 yards, six minutes, 16 seconds for the Jones rushing score. Yeah, I think part of that is when he's diving in there or moving forward, they're wanting to see, well, while he's doing that, was he already down? So right in there, did his, did his knees hit before he really pushed into breaking the plane of the end zone? Hard to tell, isn't it? Mm. Now the ruling is TD, though. Yes. Need enough evidence to overturn it. Ron Hudson, the referee today. First meeting between the Aggies and the Blue Raiders, by the way, since 2004. The Aggies in their first year in Conference USA doing quite well with a record of 4-1 and one so far in the league. How about that lead block? How about yeah. that fullback Ooh. block? I'll tell you what, that was an underrated offseason pickup, getting Ron Tiavasue, who lets this offense, especially in these goal line scenarios, just do a whole lot different with Ron's 275-pound body. Now play he's fullback or tight end. Yeah, he's firing out of there, too, and he's in that fullback spot. He's just not leaning out there. He's screaming out of that stance to try to get a block, who first to show in the hole, and uh, he did. He put a great block. You know, the Aggie coaching staff was saying early on in the year that Tia Vasue was getting some NFL looks. I mean, you just don't teach athleticism at 275 like Ron Tia Vasue has. They're taking a long look at it to see if Jones got in from the one. Even if he didn't, the Aggies will still be in a very good position to score and post the six points. I really couldn't see anything from that angle as well. I, I just It's hard when I, I think when you have as much of a mass of a body that's there to see what's underneath all of that. 
Jerry Kill's easy to identify today in that camo shirt. If this stands, Diego Pavia had 40 rushing yards, by the way, during this scoring drive for now. If you're an Aggie fan, you probably don't like how long this review has gone. After review, it was determined the ball carrier was down with the ball at the half yard line. <laughs> It'll be third down there. Let the hostess go to work once again, Danny. One more time. Heavy workload here early on in quarter two. So erase the touchdown for now. Will they let Jones run it again? I would have to think similar look, similar I think individuals I, right now. Yep. I think I'm, I'm a big proponent of put the quarterback underneath. He got a half a yard. You can see right there, you just got to lean into it and then get a good big push from Ron from the back there, the tush push. From the half yard line, deep back is Jones again. They hand it off to Ron Tiavasue at the goal line. Middle Tennessee thinks they stopped him. Touchdown, the big fella from Auckland, New Zealand. At his third different school, he pounds it in a half yard away. He must Early have heard us talking field, about what touchdown. a great blocker he is and what a great team player he is. And so now it's like for being a great blocker team player, you take this one to the house. That's some, that's some hard yards right there. Danny, that's what I call fullback touches right My there. man, huh? I mean. Former Missouri State Bear also was a Utah State Aggie in his lone year as a New Mexico State Aggie. Punches it in a half yard away. I thought maybe they would let Jones run it again, but you know what? If you have Tia Vasue, let him touch the football. Point after from Ethan Albertson out of the hold of backup punter George Eberly. Long snapper is George's brother, Charlie Eberly. And the Aggies go ahead 7 0 here on homecoming. Long, lengthy, sustained drive, and Pavia led the way. I was thinking the same thing. What? You know, with those long, sustained drives, it just beats down the defense because you're out there forever. And although it's a nice night, it's still very hard. Sports Accessories is the official licensed merchandise provider for the Aggies. They have their tent out there pregame during the tailgate festivities. They also have the best Aggie gear in town at the best price. Check out their showroom in Las Cruces, or you can visit the online store at theaggieshop.com. Brian Cox and his crew, they do a marvelous job. That tent was busy. I'll tell you what, Danny, the pregame stuff going on, the pregame tailgate stuff, that was pretty cool to see, wasn't it? Yeah, there, and there's a lot of support, a lot of buzz around, around the, the Aggie football. A lot of people here visiting, homecoming. It's a great time to come back, catch up on what's happening. Kind of feels like 2017 during that game against South Alabama. But back then, it was one chance and one chance only. If the Aggies didn't win that game, they would not be bowl eligible. This time around, you have a little more wiggle room with four chances at it. But you want to take care of business here today against Middle Tennessee. No return for England Chisholm. DJ England Chisholm watches it fly over his head. And the Middle Tennessee offense goes back to work from the 25. Just to go back on that on that bowl game, Adam, it, it was a great bowl game, too, in, to in Tucson. There was lots of fans. It was a great, great game against Utah State. Anyway, here we are today. So instead of eight plays, 80 yards, it's nine plays, 80 yards. On the Ron Tiavasue, rushing score, his first touchdown as an Aggie. Nick Vadiato. Back to work for Middle Tennessee. Still looking for their first points. They've been turnover prone offensively this year, but posting a lot of points, 30 plus in each of their previous three games. They toss it out for Cradle. Nowhere to go for Jaden Cradle. This Aggie defense, Danny, doing a really good job of stopping the run so far. Below four yards per rush for Middle Tennessee. Out there, on uh, Keontae Clinton came screaming in. He saw that pitch, and as soon as he did, he went to the backfield, and although he didn't make the tackle, what happens is you blow that thing up because there's nowhere to go. You'll see him from the far left right there. You see him come screaming in there, duck underneath that. He takes out one blocker. Now there's no one left but just someone else to go clean up and make a tackle. Gain of only two on the toss. Quick strike to 
Justin Olson, the North Carolina transfer with his second catch. Third down coming up again for middle. Yeah, they're an explosive offense, and so even on the third down here, you don't want to you don't want to sit back too long. You still have to put some pressure on there, and if you do put pressure, and you do bring a blitz, that leaves you in man coverage on the on the back. Third and four for Middle Tennessee. One for four so far on third down. They hand it off. Cradle slips out of the tackle. Can't get out of the second tackle though. There is Gabe Peterson. Boy, is he playing well. You know, Gabe Peterson and Buda Paletti, both on the corners there coming in, one playing the stud position, one is that defensive end. They're, they're just great corners to have in there. So you see him here, 16 at the bottom of your screen. He sees what's happening. He's pulling off his blocker, pushing away, and making a great tackle in there, along with many Aggies. They saw it all coming the whole time. Jordan Vincent came up as well. So Middle Tennessee has to punt again. There's not a lot going on for their offense so far in the first half in their first game in 18 days. Brady back to receive, calls for a fair catch. We talked to Jerry Kill about having 18 days off. He said when you have that much time off, you overthink. We'll come back to Aggie Memorial after these messages. Nice crowd on hand on a gorgeous Saturday late afternoon. Adam Young, Danny Nee, Tatiana Favela back with you. Aggie offense back to work. Seven for 11 so far for Diego Pavia. The Aggies with total yardage of 147, but only seven points to show. That includes a turnover as well on a pick from Diego Pavia, who's back to throw on first down. He's going to air it out deep. Had Hudson, but overthrew him by a couple of yards. Oh, we had that. Oh. Did, we saw, you, you can see it perfectly from the booth angle up here. He's coming in a post right there. He's got the corner beat. The safety's too slow to come over top to help. And he just has both guys beat. And now he just got to get the ball there and just a bit too far. How would you grade the offense so oh, far? Oh, man. I was going to say B plus until that yeah. throw right, until that right there. One turnover, right? And then that that one there, because that's, that's, that's money. That's points. B. Um, but... Man, the line, everyone, they're, they got it going on. They're doing good. They're usually a pretty tough grader, so I think they'll take a beat. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> it's a better it, grade than I ever got, it, probably. <laughs> it, it could change in a couple minutes. You never know. Pavia back to throw again. They're going to air it out again. Good coverage on the far side of the field. Jordan Parker was the intended receiver. Coverage from cornerback. Three-year starter, Teldrick Ross. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that they went for both of those at the same time here. When I was talking to Coach Sanchez, it's like, well, tell me about when you're up man. When you got man coverage, it's just your guys against them. And can your guys beat them? And he said, you're right. And we have uh, some great receivers that can beat a lot of defenders, and we're going to go get them. And there they are. Twice they went to go get them. Parker's been the big play man at wide receiver. He's averaging 49 yards per catch this year. Pavia hit as he throws. Flat comes in. Brady was tangled up. And I wonder if they got to Pavia as well, if that's where the penalty is. How tough is Pavia? You saw the blitz. You saw him coming in. He's creeping in. And as soon as he's there, he knows that everyone is a for Number six, defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Everyone's accounted for except the except the blitzer. He knew that, he saw that, and still stood there, delivered the ball, and took the big blow. Penalty on strong safety. Jacoby Thomas will extend the drive for the Aggies. Thomas, four interceptions a year ago, has had a really good career at Middle Tennessee. You know, Adam, this kind of tells me as you start to look at some of the blitzing that's going on here is that Middle Tennessee does not want D.U. to sit back there and get comfortable because he's a threat both running and throwing, and so they're going to put pressure on him from different angles to make sure he's uncomfortable as possible. Watkins, the running back, to the left of quarterback Diego Pavia. Left to toss, goes to Watkins. He splits the hole before he's taken down past the 40. Gain of six for TCU transfer Monte Watkins. Monte's got the wheels, right? So get him the ball, get him to the outside, get as many Timeout yards the after for the catch. It's going to be a, a pass and let him just go do his thing. 
and the receivers just hold on your block as long as you can because he's coming in a hurry. He was a hurdler, right? So he, he, was. he was just like, ah, oh, maybe that was just almost like a hurdle right there. It's like, do the hurdle thing, and then boom, you're gone. The injured player was Louis Canepa, redshirt freshman from Napa, oh. California. There's Louis right there. He's having a good, good year. Oh, that's too bad. So Shamar Jackson, a Juco transfer, comes in for Louis. Hopefully Canepa is okay as he gets attended to by the training staff. Empty backfield for the Aggies are in second down and four. Pavia rolls the pocket right, throws it underneath, caught by Eli Stowers, his second catch. Look at the young man from Denton, Texas, speed down inside the 30. They'll mark him at the 28-yard line. He had both Eli and Jonathan Brady open. I think they found something. Empty backfield. Everyone's out in a pattern. There's no one left. Roll the quarterback out. They're going to have to go address him, whether you're going to go get Pavia or are you going to sit back. If they come get him, it's going to leave people open, and that's where he found him. It's a great little call right there. Coach Beck, offensive coordinator. I think as the year goes on, he's calling some great plays. I just really like the job he's doing. Catch and run of 30 for Eli Stowers, the redshirt sophomore transfer from Texas A&M. Ball is at the 28. Fake the jet sweep. Pavia throws it across the middle. Guess who? It's Stowers again. Trying to stiff arm Jacoby Thomas, who wrestles Eli out of bounds. Inside the 20. First down, the Aggies inside the red zone. Yeah, just quickly dump it out to him, get him the ball as fast as possible, let him do, do what he does, and he's a, he's very good wheels, very good speed. But the thing I really liked, Adam, is watch him know that as soon as he gets the ball, they're going to kind of strip it from him, so he takes care of the ball. Two hands, got two hands on the ball, going to hand onto it, make sure nothing happens. I like that. That's awareness. Busy first half for Stowers. Inside of six minutes left here in the first half. Gain of 11 on the previous play, down to the 17. Aggies trying to go ahead by two scores. They give it to Star Thomas, who is stuck right away. That's star middle linebacker, Sam Brumfield. Team leader in tackles for the Blue Raiders. Stopping Star Thomas. Stopping Star Thomas is not an easy task, right? So he's got a lot of inertia when he's coming through that line there. There was a lot of big pops when that happened right there. You know, he just bust that one block. And, uh, man, he's off to the races. Uh, that's tough for him. Only a gain of one for Starr. Two running back look here with Thomas to the right of Pavia. Jones to the left. Stowers and David, bottom side of the screen. Top side is Cordell David. Dump off, intended for Stowers, or intended for Thomas, I should say, and it's low near his shoe tops. Yeah, I think Stowers was his lead blocker there. I don't think anyone, I think there was one guy that Stowers had to block if he can just complete that pass, and uh, he's off to the races. You know, looking at this, as they're coming into Diego, everything's high, high. Maybe Diego needs to, to get that little sidearm thing that is so big now yeah. in the NFL and other places, right, where you bring your, your slot down and you're throwing it more of a sidearm to get underneath those guys. Kind of like Patrick Mahomes Patrick does Patrick Mahomes, yeah. yes. Aggies need the seven-yard line on third and nine. Trying to finish this drive with a touchdown. Pavia back to throw. He'll lob it far side. He overthrows Stowers. Good coverage from Jacoby Thomas. No flag, and the Aggies will have to settle for a field goal try from Ethan Albertson. He missed that throw, but, but he knows also that he has one turnover, and if he misses that to Eli, he's going to miss it long and not let anyone catch it. If he can't, his guy can't go get it, Let's just put it out of bounds, and let's collect the three with the field goal. This one from 33 yards for Ethan Albertson. Had a season long of 47 last game against La Tech. He is 12 for 16 this year, and he pushed it. No good. So the Aggies cannot capitalize. Stowers was big on the drive, but an empty possession for the Aggie offense. Low scoring game so far in half one here on homecoming. Pass on ESPN Plus. And every women's basketball game this season will air on ESPN Plus as well. While every men's basketball home game that's not on CBS Sports Network can be viewed right here on ESPN Plus. Basketball season is here and we absolutely cannot wait. Isn't that right, Adam, Danny? Yes, thank you, Tatiana. Busy, busy time coming up. Looking forward to basketball starting up next week. 
Hookup of three yards for Vadiato and Olsen. Only four completions for Vadiato. Three of them going to the North Carolina transfer. Olsen, who makes a heck of a catch right there. Wow. And they're going to look at this for targeting, it looks like. Flag came in right away from the side judge. What a catch by Olsen. That was yeah, not a great throw. I don't know how he throw. held on to that. That was really something. Ooh. Yeah, they will review that, you would have to think. We're talking about it, it was Mackay Miller, the nickelback. You know, when you're coming in there fast and hard like he is, and the guy goes down, let's see what they say. After review, it was determined that there is no targeting okay. on the play. Third down. Yeah, I thought they would look at that. Yep. They, they look at a lot nowadays, and I thought for sure they would look at that, so they will not. The officials got together. And I like that no call. Yep. Third down coming up for Middle Tennessee. Vadiato has not been able to do much. Only had nine passing yards before this possession, so now only 12 in total for Vadiato. Back to throw on a third down. Here comes Sterling Webb. Flag comes in. Vadiato will spin out of a tackle. Heavy hit on the sideline. A flag came in, though, early on in the play. Probably going to be holding on Middle Tennessee. Yep. Great move up front by Sterling Webb. Breaks free and just couldn't bring him down, but he ran into him or sure... Holding, number 77, offense. The penalty has declined. Result of the play is fourth down. So the Aggies declined the penalty. It was on right guard, team captain Keelan Rutledge, but Vadiato scamper was shy of the stick, so they decline it. And Middle Tennessee will have to punt. You can see Sterling Webb right there in the, in the left part of your screen there. He initiated contact with his with his uh, offensive blocker, but then he looped around. When he looped around, it broke him free, and he absolutely had lots of pressure on him. This is the fifth punt in the first half for Middle Tennessee. No points to show so far. Really haven't even flirted with the end zone yet. Here's Brady down the near sideline, and Brady, a pretty good return. Aggies will have good field position just shy of the 45. I, have a, I think they have a running into the kicker back here. Running into the kicker, number 36, return team. Five-yard penalty is enough for a first down. Oh. My goodness. So the defense has to go back out to the field. That one will sting. You just can't do that, Dan. Yeah, you can't. And and that's a. And earlier I was going to say, you know, when you're coming in full blast and you and you're in a position where you can hit the kicker, you better make sure that you get the ball because after you lay out and you don't and you run into them, they will throw the flag, and that will get the ear of the coaches when you get to the sidelines. And keeps the, keeps the drive alive, right? Yeah. It's a drive killer. Blue Raiders offense back to work. So Vadiato back on the field trying to find any sort of a rhythm. They've struggled running the football as well. This time, Vadiato, a designed run. Gets away from the Keyshawn Elliott tackle. Gets up to the 35 and picks up three. Do you think that long layoff has maybe hurt the offense for Middle Tennessee more than their defense, Danny? I just don't think they found their rhythm. It could be. You could be absolutely right. So I never, I'm not sure how teams take it, but... It just seems like their rhythm isn't there, and that could be the pressure that's being applied by the Aggies. Um. Mattiato throws, diving attempt by Olsen, incomplete. Andre Selden, the star corner in coverage. Yeah, great coverage right there. I thought for sure when he when he flipped around and that ball bounced up, that's a perfect time for a, someone else to pick that, right? So when you're in there and the ball comes up, there's the pick drill right there. Great coverage by Andre. Here we are for big third down. Third and seven, Aggie defense has been outstanding today. Vadiato with the pocket collapsing. He is wrapped up by Jordan Vincent. A flag does come in though. Let's see if it's holding on Middle Tennessee. It is once again, and that was the penalty 
Before the Aggie penalty, the running into the kicker that extended the drive. Holding, number 64, offense. Penalty is declined. Result of the play brings up fourth down. Hey, when you're in the offensive line, there's that's a tough, tough job. But when you have a rusher like Buda Paletti, Buda Paletti, you'll see him at the bottom of the screen here. Watch him, he'll just come in there. Now he's the bull rush. He pushed the guy three, four yards back. He's right there, he's got him. And if he doesn't grab him, he is gonna make a sack. Time out. So he had to grab him, throw New the Mexico penalty. State, their first of the half. This will be extended into a full media timeout. Aggies call a timeout. They'll talk things over on special teams. 2.55 left in quarter two. Adam Young, Danny Nee, the former Aggie defensive back, and Tatiana Favela back with you from Aggie Memorial Stadium. The Aggie defense, Andre Selden, that crew, they've been outstanding today. Holding Middle Tennessee scoreless in the first half so far. West Star is a proud supporter of the Aggies. Find them online at weststarbank.com. Jerry Kill wanted to make sure special teams was ready for this, and they would not have deja vu on running into the kicker. So that's, that's why he called a timeout with 2.55 left here in the first half. Brady is back deep. Brady calls for a dangerous wow. fair catch. Had a lunge towards it and dive towards it around the 25. Toughest job on the field right there, catching punts. Hey, I have to say that defense, they've really stepped up, right? So we were almost there scoring. We're off, you know, talking offense, talking offense. In the meantime, look at our defense. To total yards for Middle Tennessee. They only have 44 yards to 195 for the Ags. So defense standing tall right now. Now we need some insurance points from the offense. Do you feel like they're putting too much pressure on the defense right now? I don't know. I think, I think, I think the, the defense is just playing, uh, playing well, no mistakes. Tomas Whitford, the tight end in motion. Big block by Whitford, bouncing to the edge is Watkins. And Watkins upended out of bounds, but there is a flag near the 27. Right around where Whitford laid that block. Maybe the difference, Adam, is the penalties, right? So we've had a lot of holding. <laughs> Number 51, offense, 10 yard penalty, remains first down. Mm. Some of the penalties that have killed some of the drives, and so maybe that's the difference. Because those right there, big chunk plays, you got to have those. That's the fifth Aggie penalty. This one on star left guard, sophomore A.J. Vipulu. That was a big block from Whitford. Yeah. Man, oh, man. Watkins doesn't need a lot, but if Whitford's blocking for him, that certainly helps. Pavia fires, caught by Bellamy. So they'll get a lot of that yardage back and then some. Up to the 30, there's a scramble. I don't think the ball popped loose, but Middle Tennessee's trying to say it did at the 30-yard line. Blue Raiders are trying to say they have the football, but the Aggies jumped They're on it, so Bellamy did lose it. Yeah, he did lose it, but get, got it back. You know, when I was talking to Coach Sanchez, um, he said, you know, part of what we're going to try to do offensively is get the receivers in positions, and I need those guys to break the initial tackle because if they do, we're going to get some extra yards after catch. And I got a little coaching situation down there with the official and the maybe see something. Timeout on the field for an injury to the offense. Ah, injury. Yeah, Bellamy had to go yeah. off. He made the catch and he's the injured player who has to go off. But Coach Sanchez's point was is, you know, let's just not be content with making the reception, but we need you guys to break tackles to make something happen. Bellamy, great example of that last play. He wasn't content just catching the ball. He turned around and now tried to bust a tackle or two and make something big happen. Heavy pressure shown by Middle Tennessee. Pavia hit as he throws, and he throws it over Stowers. Coverage from Fluell in the safety for Middle Tennessee. It's getting a little chippy down there. Some players yeah. pushing and shoving right around Pavia with the Aggie O-line and the D-line for Middle Tennessee. Tough blitz, no one there to, to pick up the receiver or pick up the blitzer. Pavia has to dump the ball, get it out as fast as possible. Nothing there, so just throw it away. Live the fight this third down. Third and six. Hasn't been a great first half of the Aggie offense, but you certainly feel like you should have more than seven points with the way they played so far. Running back Watkins. Four receiver look. Swing it out for Watkins. Let's see if he can get by the tackle. He can't. 
Open field tackle for Fluellen. We're calling his number a lot. Trey Fluellen, senior out of Gilmer, Texas. Timeout. Middle Tennessee State, their first of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. And now Middle Tennessee will stop the clock. They feel like they can get some points here late in the first half and try to get on the scoreboard. Clock operator, please reset the game clock. So think back minute, on this drive. This drive would have been our, our insurance one, four, drive, right? Get some extra the points in clock, there. Please. And if you think back, we picked up the 10 yard penalty. That's up. That holding that Thank kills you because now. It becomes whatever it was, first and 20, second and 20, and, and you have a long way to go, and you have to pick up big chunks to make it there, and we did not. This is the quick one here, quick toss outside, trying to get Monte to the edge, and if so, it's off to the races. But, man, they're closing quick on him, not giving him that. This is a middle Tennessee defense coming in, allowing 33 points per game, allowing 40-plus in two of their previous three, 30-plus in four of their previous five. So their defense at times this year has struggled. They've been awfully good so far today, holding this powerful Aggie offense to just seven first half points. Zach Haynes will punt it away. Zach Dobson, the return man, calls for a fair catch at the 20. So now you're asking for the defense to make another stop late in the first half. I mean, you look at the stats, Danny, 211 total yardage for the Aggies, only 44 for Middle Tennessee. Of course, penalties have been a factor. A turnover has been a factor, but the Aggies probably feel like they should be up more than 7 nothing right now. Well, yeah, it feels like we've had the ball the whole first half, right, and only have seven points to, to account for it. But, um, yeah, that's tough. But now is the time not to let Middle Tennessee get on the board with a minute 42 left. Middle Tennessee will get the ball first to start half two. Nick Vadiato has struggled so far. He's going to run with it here, trying to angle out towards the sideline, and he steps out of bounds right before Keyshawn Elliott could get to him. First down run for Vadiato. Yeah, he certainly knows what's happening. So now the Aggies are back in kind of a, uh, not a, a prevent, but certainly a, a zone coverage where they're a little off everyone and gave him extra room to run. Ten-yard scamper for the quarterback, Vadiato. Redshirt sophomore from Plantation, Florida, nearly throws an interception. Wyoming transfer Keontae Glinton probably turned around a half second too late. Keontae is playing a great corner. He's all over that thing right there. It's a back shoulder fade they're throwing in there. And, uh, and Keontae just saw it the whole time too and thought, man, maybe he can pick that. Matty Otto, second at Conference USA and 23rd in the country in passing yards. He's only thrown for 14 yards here in the first half. He will throw on second down and 10. He'll dump it off to his running back, Peason, who shoved out of bounds by the aforementioned Keontae Glinton. Pickup of two, it brings up third down. Having an awareness of where you are on the field, knowing that you got to come up close as fast as you can right there, which he did. He's just playing a great corner over there. I really like what he's doing. Middle Tennessee one for seven on a third down. Dump off again, jungled by Payson. Payson breaking free. Miles Rouser gets to him. He almost didn't catch it, finally grabbed it, and he scampered down the far sideline. It's a good call right there, Middle Tennessee. When the Aggies are aggressive, and they are, the way you get teams like that is to throw a little screen pass. In that case, they let everyone through, dump the ball behind everyone that's penetrating, and there's no one left but one linebacker in one corner. Gain of 30 for Peacent. Vadiato keeps it, and he runs for almost 10 yards again. It looks like he does get 10 yards near the sticks. They'll call it nine. So second down and one coming up for Middle Tennessee. Mattiato looking near side throws, and it's caught. A touchdown. DJ England Chizza. His second straight game with a touchdown, and his second touchdown this year. So that's a very fast receiver right there, and good coverage. You're on him right there, but the minute you look back, you kind of fade just away. That's a great ball right there. That's a one time that uh, Vidiato had time back there to throw the ball and had a great throw. 
So now all of a sudden, some confidence, some rhythm for this Blue Raiders offense that has struggled in their first game in 18 days. Point after from Zeke Rankin to tie it up. And a flag comes in before he lets go of it with his right foot. Full start, number 55, offense, five yard penalty. We'll try the down. That's Mateo Guevara, redshirt freshman from Flowery Branch in Georgia. So Rankin will have to kick it again. Now what Middle Tennessee did do here is they left some time on the clock for the Aggie offense. 48 seconds and one timeout left. Could be enough time to march down and get some points. But first, the point after from Rankin, his second attempt, low kick, and it's good. We're tied at seven. We're just going to have a bad taste in your mouth if you're the Aggies right now because you give up a big play on a little dump off on third down, really the first broken play for the Aggie defense, yep. and you feel like you should have more than seven, and you very well could go to the halftime locker room break tied at seven here. Yeah, this is a great pass right there, right? So kind of a fade. He fades in there. That's not bad coverage. He's on him, but that's just a great ball and just a great catch, and we're very close. But you're right, Adam. It feels like we've held the ball the entire first half, and it's tied. Outside of the big third down play in that pass right there, the TD, the defense have played stellar, right? But that's the way it is. When you don't have enough points, all they need is two, and they're back in the game. So now we got a 7-7 you know, seven -seven contest. And on the flip side, too, Danny, you could have had a Middle Tennessee go into the locker room thinking about how poor they played offensively, right. but right. now they're going to go there and say, you know what? We, got we might have found something yeah. late in that first half. Right. A 27-yard touchdown strike, a 16th touchdown pass for Nick Vadiato this year, and once again the second straight game with a touchdown for DJ England Chisholm. So 48 seconds, we go back to the old rules now here in the final two minutes and a half where the clock does stop. You have a timeout left. This should be plenty of time to get some points. Depends on how aggressive Coach Kill wants to be, right? So do you want to come out here? Do you want to do you want to have confidence in your offense and say, let's have a couple of one or two big throws down the field and maybe position ourselves for a long field goal? Can we do that, or are you just going to sit on it? Let's see what Coach decides to do. The Aggies did commit one turnover earlier. Interception thrown by Pavia. The eighth career pick for Trey Fluellen, who's played a really, really nice game so far in the first half. Aggies will hand it off for Monte Watkins. Good run for Watkins on the jet sweep on first down. Watkins up near the 40. They're going to mark it at the 38. He gets 13. It's a great play right there, right? So Monte knows to where he is in the clock. You get to the sidelines. Coming across here, kind of a jet sweep. Give him the ball. Get the corner and then get out of bounds. Yeah, underrated move right there. Get out of bounds, stop the clock. Only six seconds came off. Pavia with Watkins at running back. Pavia throws it downfield, caught by Jonathan Brady. Stays on his feet, spins down to the 30. Good balance shown by Brady. And you know, they're up on the line. They're coming to get Diego, and Diego still had enough wherewithal to stand in the pocket, see Jonathan, deliver a strike, and let him get as many yards as possible. Gets set up. 42-yard catch and run for Brady. Pavia moving right, throws it away out of bounds. Stops the clock with 24 seconds left. He might have thrown it yeah. in the stands. Yeah. Like the idea though, like the idea from Diego though, it's like, look, nothing there. Here's this pass, the play before to Jonathan Brady coming across the middle. We had crossing routes by a lot of, a lot of receivers coming there. Jonathan breaks open and he stands in there and delivers a strike. You have to think about this too. If the Aggies don't get a touchdown, how much confidence does Jerry Kill have in Ethan Albertson after he missed a 33 yarder earlier? They would be in field goal range right now. Pavia across the middle, caught by Eli Stowers. The stiff arm, he gets out of bounds. Right around the 20, they're going to mark it at the 20. He gets 10. Well, cer certainly you can see everyone up on the line. Look at them. They're coming to get Diego. They're like, there's not, we're not sitting back and letting him pick us apart 
And as much as they're up there, the line is giving him just enough time to deliver the ball quickly, getting it out of his hands. Eli catches the ball, really gets out of bounds. Really on the field is a fumble forward, out of bounds. Jerry Kill still has one timeout left in his back pocket. Pavia throwing far side. Bellamy's the receiver, and he is tangled up with the cornerback, Teldrick Ross. So 10 seconds left. Maybe you have one more shot here, Danny. Maybe. I think so. I think you give it one more. Let's still stop and go. They know that it's coming. They know that you're not going to be content with catching it short. So they were playing them for anything deep and not letting them have it. Now in this spot on the field, if you're going towards the end zone, the best targeted receiver this year has been Trent Hudson. But Hudson right now not in the game. Four receivers in. Stowers, P.J. Johnson, Donovan Falpel, and Bellamy. Front side pressure. Pavia gets free. Pavia gets out of bounds with three seconds left. He almost ran the clock out. And not, I think he's, I think he was thinking, look, I, I, can I get there? Can I get there? This is a timing thing, right? It's like, can I get there in time where if I don't, there's enough for a, for a field goal attempt or not? That's a tough one right there. He gets 12 yards, so a much shorter field goal here for Ethan Albertson. This one from 26. He missed from 33 earlier. Out of the hold of George Eberly. This one is good. There you go. Albertson back on track. One of the best kickers in program history, and he bangs it through. Field goal is good. That's the end of the first half. Aggies will take a 10-7 lead into the halftime break. The new Senda Credit Union halftime show. First meeting since 04. Our director is Vinny Conway tonight. Our producer is Rito Rodriguez. Engineer Alex Ramirez. Val at Shea Luis Pastrana. On audio, Anthony Casales on stats. Great to have you with us from Aggie Memorial. It's a big one, a lot on the line. The Aggies need one win to punch their ticket to a second straight bowl game. For the first time since 1959-1960, and DJ England Chisholm will not risk it. Calls for a fair catch in the end zone, and it'll be at the 25 for Nick Vadiato. What really impressed you, Danny, about the Aggie defense overall in that first half? I think the Aggie defense has mixed up the different moves up front where you're going to be twisting and, and blitzing and able to keep the quarterback keeping the whole offense off off kilter. They just couldn't really get anything going until that very last drive. So I think those calls up front between the line linebacker and holding their gaps. I really like that. You just saw Rick Stockstill, the veteran head coach, 18th year at Middle Tennessee, fourth longest tenured coach in the country. His quarterback, Fatiato, will keep it. He's done a pretty good job of that with his legs today. Honestly, he's been better with his legs than his arm overall. That, that's just a trick right there because I think it looked like Gabe Peterson on the backside. See him right there? I think he got fooled. And otherwise, he was in great position. He just has to find the ball. Vatiato, quick strike. His favorite target's wow. been Olsen, and he has met right away. That's Reggie Echols, the Juco transfer from Independence. Johnny on the spot defensively. I like that. He may have had a little tackle for a loss in there because he was being blocked and he threw the blocker, extended his arms, got rid of the blocker, get to the ball as fast as you can because he saw that what was happening right there. This was just a blocking quick screen out there and he has to get off his block. Did a great job. Loss of one, so it's third and two. Middle Tennessee, two for eight on a third down. The one conversion, though, was late in the first half, and it was a big one. Flag comes in. Vadiato will throw it downfield. They blow the play dead as the catch was made by Dobson. Offside, number 10, defense with contact. Five-yard penalty is enough for a first down. Penalty is a big issue in the first half for the Aggies. That is penalty number six. This one is on Hawaii transfer Gabriel Iniguez. So Gabriel's just trying to be aggressive up front, right? He's trying to get in the backfield as fast as possible and just jumped it just by hair. Tried to pull him off a little bit too, and it kind of worked. It got him into the zone, made contact, and gave him five yards there. It's hard to really tell the defense, chill out a little bit. Don't, don't be so aggressive. That's just not their nature. That's not what they're there for. That defensive line is to be aggressive. So it helps Middle Tennessee get a first down here. First down and 10 after the penalty for the Blue Raiders. 
trying to take their first lead of the game. Variano scrambles loose, shimmied through a hole, runs down the near sideline, but a flag does come in all the way back at the 35. We'll see if this is holding in our middle. It is. You know, I holding, number 77, offense, 10 yard penalty, remains first down. You know, that defensive line has penetrated and has really taken the fight to Middle Tennessee. And even on that last play, it's like, how does he get out of there? Because there's so much penetration. If you look, everyone is up front. Look at our corners, Gabe and Buddha right there pushing in so far. And there's a hold right in the middle. You can see it right there. Great penetration, holding their gaps, and it's got a hold. Now, that is only penalty number two on Middle Tennessee, but they've also had a couple penalties declined in order to send it to a fourth down. So it would have been the second penalty on Rutledge, but one of his holding calls earlier was declined. Batiato will stick it in the belly of Peason, who spins away and spins up to the 35 and a half yard line. They'll probably give him about six on the first down run. Keyshawn Elliott had some helmet issues. I'm gonna spray some water in there, Danny. It's gonna cool him down. We need him. Get hot. McCall at seven, so second down and 13. Well, that caps the receiver, intercepted by Dylan Early. His first career pick. Adam, you, grew, you do a great job because I would have said the whole time, oh, it's a, pick, field, it's a pick, it's a pick, it's a pick. But you did a great job calling State. it. Calling it straight, deep ball. You saw the overthrow, great call. I'm thinking pick, 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 pick. Boom, there it is right there. That's what we needed. The first Aggie interception since the FIU game in early October. Wear that cowboy hat, Dylan Early. That's the turnover cowboy cap. And the Aggies force a turnover. They've been doing that a lot lately, but it's been forced fumbles, not interceptions. The third different Aggie to record an interception this year. How about Star Thomas hopping out of a tackle and then push back. At the very end of the play, he gets a handful. I like the determination. You know, he's just that type of runner. It's like, you didn't tackle me, so why should I fall? I'm not falling just because there's no one there. I'm going to bounce around and continue to get yards as many positive as possible. All the way up to the 34 on the pickup of five yards for Starr. We thought we might see a shootout in some respects today. Middle Tennessee's been really good offensively, offensively, but we know how good the Aggie defense has been. This Middle Tennessee defense has certainly stepped up so far in the first two-plus quarters. Pavia slings it. Tomas Whitford was the receiver, and that one bounced out of Tomas's hands incomplete. I'm not sure he could have done much with it. Again, this is the same thing that, that we saw that uh, Middle Tennessee did to the Aggies. It's like you get in a, a very aggressive defensive line. Sometimes you want to let him in and throw it right behind him. We tried the same thing here, but nothing happened. That could have been intercepted. Dangerous pass by Diego Pavia. 18th career start for Diego. His accuracy has really improved in year two in the program. Also the team's leading rusher in this game tonight and for the year. He'll roll left, he'll toss it for Thomas, breaks two tackles, he gets the first down and more. He's finally tripped up by Trey Fluellen. I don't know how he got the first down, Danny. I was thinking the same thing. This is just a little flicker pass underneath there, right? So he goes out and Diego comes out of the pocket. You see him come out of the pocket there and then just flip the ball underneath to, to Star and try to get as many yards as possible. Two tackles, he should have been tackled twice and he's still able to get the first down. 13 yard pickup, Star wanted to go for a touchdown yeah. there. He was not happy with himself as he nearly got to midfield. Star Thomas, a young man out of Homer, Louisiana. 13 career touchdowns overall. McKaylin Young is in the game right now at running back. They hand it off to Thomas and he rumbles to the 50. Three yard gain Number for four, Thomas on the Thomas. first down run. Brings up third, second down and seven. Second down and seven. Jamani Jones will head off. Aggies rotating four running backs per usual. Jones, Thomas, Watkins, and Young. Lone back here is Star Thomas. On second down and seven. Middle Tennessee showing pressure again defensively. Pavia under heavy pressure. Pavia tripped up. 
Maybe gets a half yard. Not much. They're blitzing a lot, Danny. Yeah, they're coming to get him, and, and they're going to stick with that because they feel like as long as he's under duress, he's not going to be able to make those passes that he needs to or break open for big plays, big chunk plays that he likes to do. In this case, you brought Ron back in. He was split out left. He brought him, come back in the out, in the backfield. You see him to the right there. He's after that. That's his block. He should have had that one block, and that goes for a long way. Ball is just across midfield. The Aggies need the Blue Raider 43. They've been in this spot right around midfield offensively all night. Pavia taking his time. Might have changed the play at the line, and we get a flat. Ball start. Ball start. Number 55, offense. Third down. Danny, that's Shamar Jackson who came in in half one for the injured Louis Canepa. So Jackson seeing some playing time when he normally doesn't. Yeah, it's tough. He knows exactly what happened in here. You just got to hold your water. You got to sit tight. Diego sees a lot happening there. He's trying to change the play, trying to account for the blitz, and he just couldn't do it. He's trying to get a jump on his block out there and just couldn't do it and jumped. I'll be interested to see if we do see Canepa at some point in the half. He was moving around just fine on the sideline late in the first half, so hopefully he might be good enough to come back in later on in the game. But for now, Jackson filling in for him. Pavia hit as he throws, and he overthrows Eli Stowers. That's a tough throw for Diego Pavia with a defender. Sam Brumfield, the linebacker, is screaming right in his face mask. You know, coming from the second quarter into this third quarter, I think they found how they're going to attack Diego. So you look for them to do that the rest of the game, and that is you're going to bring lots of pressure. You're going to fake the pressure. You're going to get him looking around, trying to bounce out of plays and just keep him off his spot. Zach Dobson standing back at the 15. Zach Haynes has had a good game trying to angle this punt. Back spin before it's touched by the Aggies right around the 15-yard line. We'll go to break. 9.21 remaining here in quarter three on homecoming. 161 games, uh, Division One in 13 years. So we were lucky to get him. We know we've got a brand new team. So I encourage everybody to come out and kind of watch how we're going to gel because I'm just as curious as all the fans are. Awesome, and let's finish off with football. How has the season surprised you so far? Well, you know, look, Jerry Kill's rebuilds historically have been in year three. You know, to go to a bowl game in year one and win it, and to be six and three in year two, it's certainly unbelievably accelerated. I thought maybe he could do it, but boy, I'm really happy that we got Jerry Kill as our head coach. Awesome, well, that makes a lot of us right at home too. So thank you so much, Mario, and back to you guys. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Mario. Catch and run for Elijah Metcalf for the first down for Middle Tennessee. He's been held in check so far, but that certainly could change. Battiato stays on his feet up to midfield. He continues to maneuver with his legs, Danny. I think they have a lot of deception in there, and they're still freezing a lot of linebackers and others that are coming in. It's like, well, who's got the ball? We're not sure. And in that case, he just kept with it and didn't give up and got some good positive yards out of it. 50-plus rushing yards for the six-foot-one redshirt sophomore, Nick Vadiato. RPO as he fakes the run. Now he'll toss it to Jaden Cradle. Nowhere to go there for Cradle on the catch. Reggie Ankles among the Aggies to meet him. Keyshawn out there on that tackle. Nothing. They weren't uh, fooled that time. Number eight left here in quarter three. Aggies by three. Low-scoring affair. First game in 10 plus days for Bo with open field tackle. That's a good one right there. Made by Torin Union, the Mesa, Arizona native. There is a flag down in the play though. Boy, Torin just split those two defenders. He saw that was what they were setting up. And you could just see as soon as the ball went out there, he had to fight between two guys and get up in there and make that tackle. It's gonna be holding on Middle Tennessee. Ron Hudson, the referee. He's searching for the number before he makes the announcement. Holding, number 10, offense. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, he's up third down. So the Aggies decline a penalty for the third time. It's gambling. That's, that's confidence in Why your not? defense, right? It's like, hey, third and 10. It's been because you're doing good. Do your job.
Makai Miller, a late substitution at Nickelback. Comes in for Union. Mattiato back to throw on a third down. He is belted as he throws, almost intercepted by Jordan Vincent. The hit was made by Gabriel Iniguez, who absolutely leveled Vadiato. I think both quarterbacks are going to be a little bruised after this contest tonight, right? Both standing in the pocket, taking their bruises, know that someone's going to be there and, and bust them pretty good, and they're going to still get the throw off, and yeah, that's a great job right there. Almost had a pick on that one as well. Punt number six for Middle Tennessee. Miles Tillman again, Jonathan Brady, who is flirting with the punt return touchdown, just waiting for his moment back at the 10 yard line. High end over end kick. Brady calls for a fair catch and heavy traffic, and the Aggies will be inside the 15, trying to extend their 10 to 7 lead. At the 13. Timeout on the field. Aggies looking for their seventh overall win, looking for their fifth in CUSA. Pavia back to work in the third quarter after this. Attendance here on homecoming. We talked to Javon Ferguson earlier. Isaiah Lottie is here. Uh, Will Clements, a number of players from that team. Demarcus Owens is here as well. Jared Phipps, a couple of cornerbacks. Five-yard pickup for Jamani Jones on the first down run. The Aggies starting all the way back at the 12-yard line. They're going to call it six, so it's going to be second down and four. Great push by that offensive line right there. And so it's those are just hot, hard-fought yards uh, and again you're just keeping the ball clock is running picking up five positive yards and just gonna move down the field Monte Watkins off the right hip of Diego Pavia 14 for 27 186 hasn't been his sharpest game but he still played well he hands it off to Watkins trying to find the edge he does down the far sideline he's trying to beat Fluell in he trips him up near the 40 Touchdown saving trip for Trey Fluell in the free safety. Trey had a great angle, otherwise it would be gone. So here it is, we've seen this play. Get Monte to the corner. If he gets to the corner, he's off to the races. Here he is, he got the corner, he's off to the races. Trey gets a good angle and able to just trip him up. Otherwise there's nothing else there. What a great run right there. 35 yard explosion. He finds a different gear at the end of the run every time. Like he's driving 25 miles per hour and then he hits the highway. Yeah. Ball is at the 47 of Middle Tennessee. Tight end in motion is Tomas Whitford. Aggies handed off this time to Jamani Jones. A good first down run for him as he picks up a handful. This is tough when you're an offensive coordinator because you have the run, it's working, you need points. We've talked about that, get some insurance runs. Do you, do you go back to the pass? The pass is what opened them up a little bit to allow them to run, but do you go back there when you're having such great positive results from your running game? Second down and four. Clock moving, five and change left here in the third quarter. No scoring so far in the quarter. 64 rushing yards for electric running back Monte Watkins. Jones. Navigates, shimmies at the marker, and then some. He got an additional yard. First down, that'll move the chains for the Aggies. Hey, we talked about those big hosses up front. The, the line is just blowing a hole really big, and then you just to get it back in there, follow them for as many positive yards as possible, then try to sneak through, get an extra couple in there. They're just doing a great job, and the clock keeps ticking. We talked about this earlier. This Middle Tennessee defense allowed 4-0-1 on the ground last time out against Liberty. But that was 18 days ago when they last played. Quarterback draw for Pavia. That just hasn't worked so far today. Not a lot on the turf outside of that 40-yard scamper earlier in the first half for Pavia. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Here it is right there. You, it's just pull the, pull the guard backside and try to get a push out block and he just missed his block and then there was nothing there even if he did, did get that block there. They were waiting. Memphis transfer James Stewart made the tackle. First year at Middle Tennessee after two years for the Memphis Tigers for Stewart. Defensive end for the Blue Raiders. They'll fake it on the jet sweep. 
Just a mini hole that Pavia finds. He's going to be about two yards shy of the marker. Gain of eight for Pavia. We've seen a lot of tackles that have just been shoelace tackles where it's just almost ready to break it. That one included, and they just barely tripped him up. See the numbers there for Watkins, 16.4 per rush. He came in averaging 11.2 per rush. Unreal numbers for Monte Watkins. He's so good, he changed his first name from Monte last year to Monte this year, took off the A. Empty backfield on a third and two from the 28. You want seven, not three here if you're the Aggies. Pavia gets the first down, lowers the shoulders. He's a tough, hard-nosed quarterback. Six-foot, 200-pounder, plays like a middle linebacker. He does. He's not afraid to take a hit either. In fact, a lot of times he will give the hit. In this case, he knows he needs to get that first down. Lots of guys coming in there. I like what I see in terms of taking care of the football as well. He knows that three guys were converging on him, and he was able to put two hands on the football, take care of the football, and still duck down there and say, hey, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little hit on you. I know you're going to hit me, but I'm going to get one in as well. And the threat of Watkins on the jet sweep, helping out Pavia right there. The 19th Aggie first down, only eight in the game for the Blue Raiders. They'll stretch it out for Jones, and he has nowhere to go. A tackle for loss. Might be a late hit. The Aggies won it. It was Jacoby Thomas who pushed out Jones. The Aggie faithful wanted a late hit. <laughs> Thomas was still driving out of bounds, potentially. Thomas had read the play. He sees it. He's coming. He's going to slide all the way with him and then just escort him out of bounds. Third tackle for loss this year for Jacoby Thomas, retro sophomore from Tullahoma, Tennessee. Loss of two for Jones. Two running back look for the Aggies. Jones to the right, Thomas to the left. They'll fake it to Jones. And the pass is batted down incomplete. Coming up was linebacker Parker Hughes. On the field is an incomplete forward pass. Third down. Everybody on this Blue Raiders defense gets their hand on the ball. Yeah, I, I think they know what's happening back there. They're saying, hey, look, he's not a 6'4 quarterback back there. Let's get our arms up. Diego has to get rid of the ball quickly. They know they're not going to get to him, so stop, get your arms up, and see what you can knock down, see if you can knock one down. I think he could have completed that, too, as well. That little, it was just a quick diagonal in there. Line to gain is the 11. Watkins in the slot left. Running back in at wide receiver. Jones, the running back, he'll block here and a passing down on third down and 12. Pavia still staying on his feet. How's he doing this? Fakes the pass. Gets a couple of yards. Probably should have had a loss of a handful. Instead, he gets a couple. And he's going to make it an easier field goal try again for Ethan Albertson. Got to have five receivers on the route, Adam. Not one of them open, and all of that, I kept looking around thinking, well, there's got to be someone coming to him. Someone's got to break to him. Didn't happen, so he just took whatever he could and allow us to take a shot at the field goal. 38-yarder for Albertson. Made from 26, missed from 33 and half one. Kick is on the way, and it is true. So the Aggies extend their lead, but Middle Tennessee and veteran head coach Rick Stockstill still well within striking distance. 13-7 Aggies late in quarter three. Ball. This Aggie defense has played a whale of a game. Can they finish off strong in the final 51 seconds here in the third and then the fourth quarter as well. They played very good second half football recently. And Middle Tennessee and Nick Vadiato will have the football at the 25 yard line. There's Nate Dryling, Danny, the co-defensive coordinator, and you spoke to him earlier this I week. I did. I love talking to Coach Dryling. You know, when I call, it reminds me that, you know, these guys not only are hardworking coaches, they're fathers, they're husbands. And so he's like, hey, can I call you back? I'm trying to get my kids down for a nap, and they're not having it. So we talked for a while, and after I said, I wish your, your wife the best, you know, fighting cancer, and it's like, man, uh, I'm, she must be a very tough woman. And he ended by saying there's two things that happens in the Dryling household. We 
we absolutely stop cancer and we absolutely stop the run. It's like, hey, yo, way to go, coach. Pass is complete to Elisha Metcalf, who spins across midfield. Our thoughts and our prayers certainly with Nate and his wife, Alexa, who's fighting cancer. And I'll tell you what, she is tough as nails. She is still in attendance at all these games. And Nate Dreiling's defense has been playing quite well this year. Yep. Got to, got to toughen up on those uh, passes, those big ones there, and trying to keep pressure on there and still keep track of the guys downfield. 26-yard catch and run for Metcalf. Nowhere to go for Vadiano, but he gets away. Flag comes in, likely holding again. That's been the highly penalized call today for this offensive line for Middle Tennessee. Vadiano was about to go down for either a loss or no gain, and then he found a hole, and it's likely a hole that helped him find the hole. And you see the front four up there, and you see them pushing through there. They're double, triple teaming a couple guys and leave someone else open. They're about to get to him, and someone will reach out and try to grab him, and that's where you get the hold. After review, there is no foul for holding on the offense. Wow. So they pick up the flag. It likely would have been our left tackle, Sterling Porsche, making his 22nd Second straight start. Transfer from Iowa Western, Juco. You don't see that very often where a holding penalty flag gets picked up. The officials discussed it, picked it up. Matty Otto, 13 for 22 for 121 and the one interception, which was recorded by Dylan Early. Matty Otto will throw incomplete. Holden Willis, the initial target. Not a bad throw. Willis just couldn't hang on to it. You, you know what? It's tough. When you when you get to those situations, Adam. Really on the field. It's an incomplete pass. Third down. You stand so close to someone that they're just tossing you the ball. And if it hits you wrong, there's no room. You can't move your hands. There's nothing to do. And you're just too close to each other. And that's what happened there. And the ball put on the carpet. Maggie defense holding the Blue Raiders to two for nine on a third down. This will be the final play in the third quarter. With only two seconds remaining. Third and six from the 45. Vatty Otto with time to throw, sneaks away again, uses his legs for the first down. Jordan Vincent made the tackle. That's the end of the third pickup. quarter. And that'll send us to the fourth. So Middle Tennessee driving, trying to take their first lead of the day. Fourth quarter comes your way next. It's a good fourth quarter to do so. First down carry for Pisit, and he has swarmed down immediately. Buda Paletti was there, so was Keyshawn Elliott and Deion Wilson, the transfer from Arizona. God, I can't get over the hustle that Buda Paletti has. He starts on the left side of the line, and as he crosses the line, sees the ball carrier, shuffles straight down the line of scrimmage, all the way to the other side to really start making something happen. Buda Paletti on one end, Gabe Peterson on the other. Two sophomores with bright futures and a sack. Guess who? Gabe Peterson, the sophomore out of Overland Park, Kansas. Man, Gabe and, and Paletti are fantastic bookends over there. You see Gabe right there, comes in there and knows exactly where he's going. Guy didn't have a chance, sets it up. First sack of the game for the Aggies after eight combined in the previous two. Third and long for Middle Tennessee. They need the 25-yard line. Vadiato, nowhere to go. Dropped again. Sterling Webb, the St. Louis in. Sterling Webb controlling that gap up front there. Nothing happening in there. Great penetration, holds his ground comes in there for the big tackle. This is a huge tackle right now. Get the ball back to the offense. You see him right there in the center scrape, just center of your screen, just hand fighting with that center up front there. And yeah, he came across the winner. Big 99, Nikhil Webb Walker, the Jamaica native, helped finish it off with Webb. Loss of two, punt coming up for Tillman. Fair catch for Brady at the 11. With the way this Middle Tennessee State offense has struggled, Danny, I don't think a touchdown is going to put the game away, but, man, you would feel good if you're the Aggies if you can get a touchdown here and go up 20-7 to 7 
in the fourth with the way this Blue Raider offense is I sputtered. think it changes the way you call your yep. defense quite a bit, right? So that and those insurance points are important. And the offense, they've been moving the ball, but they just couldn't get there quite on some critical third downs. But they're moving it just fine. They're running it. They're getting down the field, but they haven't converted to seven. So they got to really use the clock at 13 minutes, get one of those eight-minute drives, and put seven on the board. I think it's safe to say this is a season-defining offensive drive right here. Up only six, early on in the fourth. One went away from a bull bid. Still in the driver's seat for a Conference USA title game spot. Watkins handles the toss. You get a win here, you feel awfully good the rest of the way, and you're in a really good spot, but you need a good drive right here to get some breathing room. Right. And I recognize when, the when we talked to the coaches, they said, look, we're, we're looking at the conference championship, not the bowl. Still, I think if you can collect that along the way, why not celebrate it? There's a look at head coach Jerry Kill. Trying to go to 13-4 and four in his previous 17 games here as the head coach. Two running back look. Jones to the right of Pavia. Thomas to the left of Diego. Using clock. Throws. Chris Bellamy the catch. Driven back. Tackle made by Tyrell Raby. Adam, I really like the patience. I really like the, the, the style that they have right now, right? So Middle Tennessee is trying to jump in there, trying to say, I'm coming from this side. I'm coming from that side. I'm going to trick you. I'm going to let you know. And it's like, okay, take your time. Look at the whole field. See what's happening. Don't be in a rush. Take what they gave you. In this case, they backed off Bellamy. I'm going to get the ball and just quickly throw it to him. And they spot it just enough for an Aggie first down. Under 12 left. The Aggies trying to use some clock here as well. They have not trailed so far today. McKaylin Young in motion. This is a three running back look. Jamani Jones nowhere to go. Tackled down by Marley Cook, playing in his 46th career game. Number 70 for the game. offense. Must leave the game for one play for a helmet off. Offensive lineman Jacob Golden, the one who had the helmet fly off, had to leave the play. So no gain, second down and 10. Second down and 10 for the Aggies. You, of course, don't want to try to do too much, but you also don't want to be too conservative here. Yeah, and you got to get some yards in here, so if you don't, you can at least flip the field and, and kick it deep. Pavia back to throw on second down, and he is taken down. That was linebacker Sam Brumfield screaming up in Diego's face again. Redshirt Jr. out of Pearl, Mississippi. Big blitz coming in here. Receivers, think about... He's been having quick passes. In this case, he had three receivers. They're running vertical routes. They're going deep. So he has to hold the ball a lot longer. There's nowhere to go with it. Throw it out of bounds. I think by the time he's already on you, it's just like make sure you take care of the ball. At least just go down so you have a chance at a third and long. Third and 19. Loss of nine on the sack for Brumfield. Three and a half sacks now for him this year. Team leader at linebacker. Pavia back to throw, hit as he throws, and it's almost intercepted. Dangerous pass. Tyrell Raby checked that. D.R.A. McDonald got his hand on it. And the Aggies will have to punt, so they used a couple of minutes, but didn't go very far due to the sack for Brumfield. I think he looks right, but you also had some receivers to the left. They were breaking open right here. It's kind of a conservative throw. He didn't throw it like he really was just like, oh, I'm not sure that I want to get it there. But you got to be careful because uh, pick there, that will cost you. Fifth punt for Zach Haynes. He could use a boomer here from his own end zone. There you go, dude. Zach Dobson, the return man. Haynes gets it away. Pretty good punt. Dobson will let it bounce, and it's going to bounce out of bounds inside the 40. So pretty good punt there for Zach Haynes with 9.58 left here in the fourth. We have a tight one here on homecoming. Pun of 49 for Haynes. And the Aggies hang on and go to back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time since 1959-1960. Also looking for five straight conference wins in a single season for the first time in program history. And five straight wins overall for just the second time since 1961.
Tell you what, Danny, they're asking a lot out of the defense, and they're just asking yeah. more and more here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and, and that last offensive series kind of, you know, when they kicked it out, they didn't flip the field, really. You're still at midfield. It seems like this battle has been really fought midfield for all four quarters, though. Backup quarterback DJ Riles will take the snap here as Fatty Otto gets out of the way. So a direct snap to Riles, who they like to use kind of like Eli Stowers at times in the passing game and a little bit too in the running game as a backup quarterback. Yeah, I think he caught a screen pass for a touchdown last week, so there's a lot that they can do with him. They just haven't got him in there. This is a fake. Look, I, it went over my head underneath, snapped the ball. DJ's, go get, go get some yards. Riles goes off. The three offensive drives in this half for the Blue Raiders have gone interception, punt, punt. So not a whole lot. Vadiato is still doing a good job, though, with his legs. He's going to be short of first down yardage, and it's going to bring up third and short after a five-yard gain. Player down for the Aggies, that the is Buda Paletti. For an injury to the defense. Buda laying down on the turf right now. We've been talking about him all night. Sophomore from California, playing his best football during his career right now. He's our sack leader, so that would be a blow to that front up front there. This will be extended into a full media timeout. And this will send us to break as they check in on Buda Paletti. <laughs> DJ Riles, the quarterback. The backup will be in motion behind the quarterback, Fatiato. Now he's in the wide receiver spot to the right of the field. Running back is Pisa. They're going to motion Riles again. He's all over the place. Hand off to Pisa. He is stuck. Then he bounces off a tackle. Stays on his feet inside the 30. Oh, the Aggies had him stopped, and he stayed on his feet. He's done that twice here today. Yeah, that's a big play right there. You know, you, you just, you hit the end. Let's see what happens here. He bounces out. No one really tackles him. He gets stuffed, but he pops out. Problem is, the rest of the defense is thinking he's in the pile, and he's not. He's already bounced around the corner and taking it downfield. Ball start, number 77. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Third penalty on right guard Keelan Rutledge, one of the team captains, and that is after the 37-yard explosion on the run for Pisa. You know, in the first half, they had that big play, too, that was on the third down, and they ran that screen where all the defense came up. Again, this is that was a third down, big third down conversion. In this case, this is another big, down, big third down conversion they just made, so the defense got really stand tall now. Touchdown and no field goal tries here today for Middle Tennessee. They get back to the original line of scrimmage with Jaden Cradle, so second down and 10 for Middle Tennessee. It's been a tough goal of it today for this Middle Tennessee offense, but they can change everything with a touchdown right here to potentially go ahead late in the game. Matiato looking right towards the end zone, has a man, and it is incomplete. Coverage from Reggie Akles intended for 6'4 junior Holden Willis. Trying to go with the height, right? Try to throw it up. You see the Aggies do that. You get a fade in there, you get a good 6'3", 6'4 guy against someone smaller and throw it up high. Now we're here we are in big third down situation. Line again is the seven. The kicker for Middle Tennessee, by the way, Zeke Rankin hasn't been tested much this year. He's only attempted seven field goals. Aggies trying to hold Middle Tennessee to a field wow. goal try. And it looks like we have another false start on the Blue Raiders. False start, number 65, offense. Five yard penalty, third down. That's FIU transfer Julius Pierce. You can see it right there. That's that left tackle. This jumps. Part of that is because that big push that defensive line has been having. They've had a great push up front there, and they're just trying to get to the advantage point of step back quickly so you can pick up that rusher. The offensive line has struggled for Middle Tennessee tonight. 
Big third and 15. Mattiato, Paletti chasing it. Throws on the move, caught, well short of the first down. Cradle the reception. And Middle Tennessee will have to kick a field goal to try to come within three. Well, it's a good thing uh, Buddha was okay. He got back in there. He put the chase on there. There's not much he could do. He couldn't wait any longer because he was on his trail. Threw it, completed, not enough. This will be a 30-yarder for Zeke Rankin. His season long is only 31. He's five for seven. The kick is no good. The Aggie defense holds again. Timeout on the field. 6.53 left. The Aggies trying to hang on and head to a second straight ball. Welcome back tonight marks the second to last home game tonight for Aggie football this season. And after tonight, the Aggies are going to have a tough two game road stretch starting next weekend in Western Kentucky. Now that game could be pivotal to reach the conference championship USA game. And following the trip to Western Kentucky, the Aggies will travel to Auburn to play the Tigers from the SEC. The Aggies will finish the regular season at home on November 25th against the very talented Jacksonville State team. And that's been one of the surprise teams so far in Conference USA. Jacksonville State is currently in second place in the conference in their first year since making the jump to the FBS level. Adam, Danny. Thank you, Tatiana. Yeah, Jacksonville State almost upset South Carolina in Columbia earlier today. How about this pitch and catch? Pavia to Jonathan Brady. Yeah, you know, we were going to talk about the conservative play call. You can't get too conservative, and his is, that wasn't a conservative call right there. That was a good, solid get the ball downfield to a secure uh, receiver and let him get positive yards. That's a great call. Brady zips ahead for 27. Clock is moving. These new rules in college football. Clock moves unless it's under two left in the second or the fourth quarter. Aggies trying to extend this to a two-score lead. Tight end in motion, Tiavasue. Wrapped up right away is Jamani Jones. Tackle made by James Stewart, the defensive end. Devin Curtis came in to finish it off, linebacker. Yeah, it's a balance between trying to run the clock. Time out on the field for an injury to the offense. It's a balance between running between trying to just run the ball, use the clock, but you need to get positive yards and throwing the ball where it's an incomplete pass and the, and the clock stops. In this case, you get a, an injury and that stops the clock anyway, but first of all, let's make sure everybody's okay. This is starting center, Kanan Yarrow, one of the glues of this offense. A leader and a consistent player. The Aggies already lost Louis Canepa early on in the game to injury. Actually saw Louie a little bit ago. He was limping on the sideline, so he's not going to come back in. And now Keenan Yarrow limping off. Now the backup center is listed as Cooper Sheehan, redshirt freshman from prestigious Permian High in Odessa. Isaiah Mercelot, veteran in his sixth year in the program, came in as Yarrow was going off. And it's going to be A.J. Vipulu who slides over and snaps the football. So he goes left guard to center, and Mercilot is now in at left guard. Hand off to Jamani Jones. Stops in his tracks and speeds ahead. Good run, a strong run for Jones to bring up third and short. That's a great run right there. Nothing doing on the play on the inside where it was going. You can see it right there. He's coming inside, nothing happening. You see the the. The offensive lineman kind of push his guy down, clear the area. He comes back around to the left side, gets good positive yards. This is a patched together offensive oh. line right now with the injuries to Yarrow and Canepa. We cannot overstate how important those two pieces are in this O-line, especially in the running game. Let's 
Jamani Jones hit running back. Third and two. Pavia keeps it. Diego trying to push. Can't do so. Driven back. And the Aggies will have to punt with four and change left. Clock moving here in the fourth. Again, here we are midfield. This is where the battle has taken place. All game has been this midfield right here. They're waiting on Diego, waiting for him to pull that. And um, nothing doing. Coach Mitchell, the offensive line, he, offensive line coach, he has really earned his keep with this group. That group has been doing a great job. But when you start dropping by the onesie, twosie, threesie, it's like that makes it very tough. Danny, are they going to go for it here? Or wow. just try to take a delay of game? Yeah, I'm sure. Play clock down to three. Flag comes in. I think it was before the play clock expired, though. Play clock is zero, but I think the flag came in before it false start. Yep. False start, number 51, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. That's A.J. Pulu, who's now at center after sliding over from left guard. So this changes everything, and now the decision is made for the Aggies. I don't think Jerry Kill had any thought of going for it, I don't though. think so either. I think at midfield here, there was just too much on the line. It's get the ball away but you're able to go up there and say, okay, I'll, I'll, we'll see if we can play the game for five yards. Maybe you jump off, we'll get it first down. Middle Tennessee has not shown the ability yet to have a long, sustained drive and have it result in a touchdown. Zach Haynes has been a busy man. Dobson deep, and he will call for a fair catch inside the 10. They'll mark it at the nine-yard line, and Haynes continues to do his job. 41-yard punt for the Potosi, Missouri native. Can we say this again, Danny? The importance of this defensive yeah, stop? I mean, it, it's just, it's every time it yeah, seems like. It, it does. And so far, they've really held volley. They've, they've stepped up and done their job. Coach Dryling has called up some great defenses. They've had a couple of breaks, a couple of big plays. But you know, but all along when I talk to him, it's like, yeah, you know, that's going to happen. The thing is, we want to keep him out of the end zone. Yes, it's a big plays. I don't like them, but it happens. Now, can you really afford a big play? I don't know. Both these teams really need this one. The Aggies looking for their seventh win. Middle Tennessee trying to get their third and keep their bull hopes alive, but they're going to need a win out this year. And right now they are on the back of Nick Vadiato, who runs for 11 and brings up a new first down for Middle Tennessee. That's a big first down right there. Didn't, you know, you'd want to make them earn it just inch, inch by inch, yard by yard. In this case, they took 10 yards, so that's not quite what you'd want from a defensive stand. Quick throw, tackle broken by Elijah Metcalf. Metcalf is up to the 27 and a half yard line. He gets six. Field goal right now for Middle Tennessee won't do them much good. Probably not enough time left for them to kick during this drive. Radiato gets free again, speared by Jordan Vincent. And he gets four. He needed three for the first down, so that moves the chains again, but the clock continues to move. Yeah, this is where you need to, you need to stop here. And you can see him scrambling. There's no one, no one downfield, nowhere to go with the ball but there's no one also tracking him, so he goes and gets the first down. Vadiato lobs it out wide. P. Sense, uh, bend it out of bounds. Torin Union makes the tackle. And so far, so good. Good rhythm on this drive for Middle Tennessee. Yeah, this is where you really need the defense to make a, to make a stand. Just like get the ball out there and let him get some positive yards since you're kind of playing a little bit back on that. Not much, but you give them positive yards. They keep moving. The clock keeps ticking at 220. The thing you don't want to do is let them score when you're out of time. Aggie defense starting to look a little bit tired here late in the game. Nadiato shoved out of bounds by Jordan Vincent. He is scrambling more than we've seen him scramble all year for yeah. Middle Tennessee. Yeah, I think, I think you have to start spying him a little bit because he's the one that's really making him pay quite a bit, right? So he's, he quickly takes the ball down and gets whatever he can. And if we're back in coverage and no one is spying him, those are the ones that are costing us the most yardage right now. It's a four down situation at this juncture for Middle Tennessee. Second and two, they need the 48. Vadiato hands it off. 
Cradle reaching for first down, and he's going to be short by a half yard. So it's going to be third and a half yard after a gain of a yard and a half. Ruling on the field is the ball carrier short of the line of the game. They are down for the Aggies, so that is why the clock stops. Timeout on the field for an injury to the defense. That is Nikhil Webb-Walker, who missed some time early on this year with an injury. We were talking before the game, Danny, about how healthy the Aggies were coming into this game. And right. now, I mean, they're losing guys left and right. Good to see Buda Paletti come back in, but Webb-Walker is down. The offensive line has been hurt a bunch with Kanapa and Yarrow. This has been an interesting football game, a defensive battle for two programs that haven't played in a while. It was Webb Walker rolling around on the turf, so he was wrapped up a little bit. and He's able to get off on his own. So Webb Walker getting off on his own. Now what it did too, though, it stopped the clock, and the Aggies didn't want the clock to stop. So it's almost like a free timeout yep. for Middle Tennessee. Yep. Three first downs on this drive so far for the Blue Raiders. They're four for 13 on third down in the game. Third and a short one. Vadiato will throw, and it's caught by Holden Willis. I'm a little surprised they threw on a third and short when it's four down territory. Yeah, that was kind of gutsy right there, but they certainly thought they could complete that and maybe get some extra positive yards, which they did. Now the clock is not a friend. Rick Stock still, still has all three timeouts left in his back pocket. Vadiato will throw it into the Aggie sideline. He was chased from behind by the two sophomores, Peter, City, and Paletti. Got a minute left, Adam. Any big play, got to stay away from the big play. Part of that is you got to contain him, keep him in there. You see Paletti on the top right there. Lots of pressure, but good coverage. There was nowhere he could go with the ball, and that's why he had to throw it away. A minute 03 left, second and 10. Aggies by six. Black comes in. False start again on the middle of Tennessee. False start, number 63, offense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. And now the crowd's a factor. Now the crowd is a factor. We heard the crowd on that missed field goal before, and now the crowd is into it, and it's make it such fun for the players when the crowd gets into it. False start, and the crowd erupts. Penalty number six on Middle Tennessee. Vadiano throwing to a wide open Elijah Metcalf. Leveled out of bounds by Reggie Akles. Just shy of a first down. Rick Stockstill comes over to the line judge to call a timeout. Third and two coming up at first. Middle Tennessee uses their first of three timeouts. That's a big play right there. That is longer than, you know, you, you want to keep timeout. it in front of you. Middle Tennessee, their first of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. You want to keep it in front please of you. Please reset the game clock to 51 seconds. 5-1 on the game clock, please. Not much time has gone Thank away you. either. You want to kill, uh, keep them in front of you, but you don't want to give up any big plays. Hey, good talk over there, guys. This is a, uh, that was a big chunk play right there. It puts it in third and short, um, so you're still in it, but you really need to tighten up and put some pressure on there at 51 seconds left. Middle Tennessee needs the end zone, of course. Four down territory, of course. So two cracks at it. They've struggled running the football with their running backs, but Vadiato has done a really good job scrambling here tonight. They threw it. On a third and one earlier. Let's see what they do on a third and two. The Aggies show heavy pressure. Flags come in. Play is blown dead. Wow. 
And a false, false start. start again. This crowd is absolutely 100% a factor right now. False start, number nine, offense. Five yard penalty remains third down. They've been starving for football here for years. And right now the Aggie faithful making big time noise here inside Aggie Memorial. Third and eight. Line again is the 35. Battiato will run. Paletti can't get to him. Upended by Torin Union. A yard shy of a first down. Timeout. Rick Stock still again. And Vadiato is hobbling. Well, he got clipped pretty good. Ruling on the field as the ball carrier is short of the line to gain. Timeout. Middle Tennessee. Their second of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. So fourth and one coming up. 43 seconds left. Aggies by six. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 44 seconds. And now they're going to add a second on. 44 on the game clock, please. And it's all going to come down to this. Paletti almost got him. But Thank Union you. made a big down. open field tackle. That was a huge tackle right there. You're absolutely right. And with 44 seconds, they got one timeout left. You know, big stop here. Nothing big. Let's see what the young defensive coordinator, Nate Dryling, draws up. Peterson, Iniguez, Reed, and Paletti, the four men on the Aggie defensive line right now. Battiato will pull it. One on one with Keyshawn Elliott, oh. and he gets the first down. Oh, Keyshawn had him. And Vadiato slipped away. It's called running for your life right there, right? Keeping the drive alive. Pickup of seven on fourth and one. And this is your best tackler, so you want, him, you want to make sure you put it up against the best guy. That's our best guy right there. Got a little juke in there and gave him a half a step, and he was able to convert that first down. Ball at the 27. How much did this Aggie defense have left in him? Vadiato with Reed in his face, throws it away out of bounds. Second down and 10. Well, it feels like that defense has been out there a there long time. There is no foul for intentional grounding. There was a receiver in the area. Second down. So in the secondary, you know where you are. You know you don't want to give up a touchdown. You want to keep the ball in front of you, but you don't want them to give them like 20 yards or 30 yards as well. So you still have to play it honest somewhat. The big trick is the push by the defensive line. Line again, the 19 for Vadiato. Fires underneath. Peacent gets away. First down for Middle Tennessee. They're going to move the chain, so the clock will stop for now. Middle Tennessee still has one timeout remaining. Can the Aggies keep the Blue Raiders out of the end zone? They go with tempo. Vadiato near side, overthrows Elijah Metcalf. You know, it felt like there was lots of time. They had lots of time, but look now. you got 16 seconds, so, you know, if each player is, is four or five seconds... Second down and 10, 16 seconds left. Quick dump off to Cradle, spins away from the tackle, can't go any further. Keyshawn Elliott gets to him. Middle Tennessee will use their final timeout. I think coach was down there immediately. He saw that he wasn't going to get in. Timeout. Middle Tennessee State, their third and final of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. So you're just going to leak him out of the backfield there, and it dodges one tackle, 
get him down, clock's ticking. This is where coach steps in right away and says timeout because that the clock, you would have just lost the game right there. Danny, this is cherry kill football to a T as well. Oh, man. He's always said, just get it to the oh, fourth. Man. We'll find a way to win down the stretch. 13 to seven football game. A couple of old school head coaches. Rick Stock still on the other sideline. Has so much respect for Jerry and vice versa. Ball is at the 15, Middle Tennessee. No timeouts left. They cannot stop the clock. So they're going to be throwing on third and nine, of course, no doubt about it. Matty Otto, 20 for 34 for 178. He's been scrambling a bunch, but I don't know if he can scramble because you can't stop the clock. And he's going to have to use his arm here with nine seconds remaining. Aggies nine seconds away from a second straight trip to a bowl game. Jerry Kill will use one of his three timeouts. Got kind of exciting in a hurry, Timeout. didn't it? New Mexico State, their first of the half. Can't this will be a 30-second timeout. Might as well use one here Got for it. Jerry That's right. Kill. Can't take him home, you're right. So defensively, here's what you're looking at. You're looking at the secondary. The secondary has got to make sure you don't let him in the end zone, first of all, right? Let him cut it, catch it short but you can't let them have it on the five with room to run. Linebackers, you can't let any bleed pass get by you as well. You have to make sure you track everyone that's coming out of the backfield so you don't run a real route or something that you're confused by. The, the way they're gonna win is the pressure by that defensive line up front, Adam. That D line up front with Peterson, Sterling Webb. Deion Wilson and Abuda Paletti right now. Third and nine, lined again is the sixth ball at the 15, under 10 seconds left. No timeouts for Middle Tennessee. Mattiato throws and it's incomplete. Time left, three seconds left. And it's gonna come down to one Final play. So they run an empty backfield, no backs. Everyone is in the pattern somewhere. Big push up front, and he was just filling it a little bit and try to make it to the back of the end zone. I think he knew that one wasn't there. So one shot. Akles, Vincent, Rouser, Selden, and the Aggies secondary right now. And they put the tall guy, the tallness, to the, to the side right here in the slot position. Trying to protect their end zone. One final play. Vadiato throws. It is incomplete. That'll do it. They're going to storm the field from the Aggie sideline. For the second straight year and for the first time since 59-60, the Aggies are bull bound. And what a way to do it, Adam. You get back there in the secondary, you know what the what's on line. You're not gonna give them anything easy. You get a good rush up front by the defensive line, which is what we we're looking for. Nowhere to go with the ball. Throw it out of bounds. Aggies win. Danny, we talked from wow. the top. This felt like 2017, <laughs> December 2nd that year when the Aggies clinched bowl eligibility against South Alabama. It was a similar finish. It, it came was. down to the final couple of plays. It was. And I know Middle Tennessee, the record didn't show that they were as good as they really are. They're a very tough team. And I try to tell everyone I talked to, is like, this is a very good team. It's not going to be easy. This is going to be a battle. And it was. It was a great battle, Adam. The Aggies reached seven wins. They needed seven this year to assure a bull bid because of playing a 13-game regular season schedule due to their road game at Hawaii. Rick Stockstill, who has done such a good job with this Middle Tennessee program, they were looking for a third straight bowl game this year. They will not be able to get there. They fall to two and seven. The Aggies will play in a bowl game. There's Tony Sanchez, the Aggie wide receiver alum, now the wide receivers coach. Aggie Nation showed out, and the team responded, especially the defense down the stretch. Time now for the Whataburger play of the game. Danny, we didn't have much offense here tonight, so why not the final play of the game when the Aggie defense held once again? Yeah, this is one where, where they was coming the whole time and there's nothing there. 
nowhere to go. Everyone's covered. He tries to sneak it into the into the gap there. Not a gap to be had. Aggies win the game. The crowd erupts. How great is it to get the whole crowd back into this thing, Adam? Pretty special. The Aggies still with one home game left. It's going to be Jacksonville State in the regular season finale. And you and I talked about this off the air before the game, Danny. If the Aggies win, and now they have one, how will Jerry Kill handle the rest of the schedule? They're bull bound now. They're still chasing down a CUSA title. And it looks like if the Aggies beat Western Kentucky next week, they would then be in the championship game. So it's going to be interesting to see yep. the rest of the way, how yep. they handle things. And They're a little beaten up after this and one. And I was just going to say, yeah. it may have changed the strategy just a bit when you go back and say, were these wounds we can just lick and then just be good to go? I don't think so. You have to look at those injuries. And if they're really hard injuries, you have to really take it easy just a bit because you want to make sure you still have a full talent of, of players to play. So depending <laughs> on the injuries. Five straight conference wins in a single season for the first time in program history. Five straight wins overall for just the second time since 1961. Seven regular season wins for just the second time since 1968. And Danny, you always say you're going to round up the knee crew. Get ready for a bowl game. Hey, man, the knee crew, we are packed. We've already been talking about it. Our bags are packed. The knee clan is ready to travel. This is just great lunch pail, hard fought football the Jerry Keel style, and now, oh, Aggie Nation has been waiting for this. That was just a great win tonight. That'll do it for us. Final score, 13-7 to in a defensive slugfest from Aggie Memorial Stadium. For our director, Vinny Conway, our producer, Rito Rodriguez, Alex Ramirez, our engineer, Val Achilus Pistrana on audio, Anthony Casales on stats. On the sidelines, Tatiana Favela, and one proud alum to my left, Danny Nee, the former Aggie DP. This is Adam Young saying so long from Aggie Memorial. For the first time since 1959-1960, the Aggies are heading to a second straight bowl game. Good night from Aggie Memorial.